Hello, good evening, and welcome to our tiny little corner of the internet called the ProSynth Network live show. It's show 102, I think. Uh, two more to go, and we're officially two years old. Um, we've got a great show for you today. Not quite the one we had planned, but nevertheless, it's going to be a great show. There's not a huge amount of news to talk about, so we'll be filling and padding like crazy for the next two hours. But thank you for joining. Uh, if you're joining live, hello, everyone in the chat room. And if you're joining on a catch up, thanks for coming back and checking us out. And of course, first of all, please like the show please subscribe and share of course if you feel like you want to there's no pressure to do that whatsoever um and of course we are completely uh, self-funded by you guys thank you very much for all your donations throughout the week and uh if you want to donate the uh paypal donation address is just there the link is in the description underneath the video and of course you can use youtube super chat super stickers we are super super grateful for every little donation that goes into the kitty that helps us keep this thing going for you guys that's all we do it for that's literally all we do it for um if you want to keep in touch with us of course you can catch up with us on all the social media platforms the main ones anyway twitter uh instagram of course facebook where we have the group and uh youtube as well and don't forget we've also got um our <clears throat> excuse me our forum our new forum over at the uh, music players network which i will give you the link to in just a moment uh, so my professionalism here uh knows no bands and i haven't got that ready so i should put that in the uh in the comments a little bit later on um if you want to ask any of our uh, esteemed panel which i shall introduce to you in just a moment a question uh please prefix it with the big letter q so it just helps us pick it out of the chat and uh, also talking of the chat thanks to all our moderators in there who are doing fantastic work keeping us spam free and bot free and um, anything else free in there thank you uh, to everyone that does those uh, those jobs for us we are super super grateful right that's all the formalities out of the way let's crack on with the show first of all let's go to uh, my fellow co-host and the man who started it all so you can blame him ben simpson wearing hey. wearing right. something rather nice look at that hey hey look Ooh. i'm trying to get rid of why you're not wrong side no, other side, yeah, you get, yeah, they, that's the one. Yeah, there you Look go. Look at that official T-shirts. That's no uh, courtesy of Viper Graphics. That's uh, in the, in the chat. Thank uh, you, Viper Graphics. I'm giving them a thanks. Like, but I paid for it. I don't know why I'm doing that. But, oh yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hope he's. I hope he's ready for the influx of orders because a lot of people have expressed yeah, an interest, haven't they? I, I think we're going to be uh, getting a few. Uh, ordered really because in the group there's been quite a lot of inquiries yeah. about it. I don't know how um, uh, Andy's fix for posting things out to the well, states we'll sort, and that, yeah. but uh, we'll have to sort something yeah, out. it'd be great if we could get a few of them out there nice with the, the the synth shows coming up and that. It'd be nice to see a few people, wouldn't you know. it? Yeah, it could that be would like be quite a, special, wouldn't it? Walking yeah, around synth fest. It could be like help someone out, you know. If you see if you see a fellow a fellow pro synth <laughs> network member and they're in a bit of a fix, like the wheels fell off the van or something, you could go and help them. You know. Be like the AA, <laughs> when we salute each other as we drive past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, everything well in your world? Yeah, everything's great. Still, unfortunately, on vocals with the band. Right. Uh, it's not gone as well as I'd hoped, so I was hoping that that would be done and dusted now because I hate it. But yeah, yeah we're, we're still doing it. I think we've only got one song to do though, so it's going well. It's mm. still going well, cool. and plus, like I've taught them how to do a bit now, so I can just sit. I actually sit at the back of the room here and like just just, just watch that. them like do like auto you're a producer. Tuning. Yeah, you're like Trevor Horn. Auto you just sit tuning there. for Britain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't even get involved. Though. I don't know how involved Trev got, but I'm mm. like I'm not even commenting on it now. <laughs> I'm that bored. But <laughs> it's it's, it, it's going well. It is going good. Um, Andy in the chat says, "Can we have some polo shirts? Is that something that can be done?" I reckon so. Yeah, I wanted yeah. a cap, but he, he he can't do caps at the minute. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think we polo shirts, think, hoodies. Yeah, it's we're, all, we're on to a possible. thing here. Yeah, yeah. This time next year, Rodney, we'll be millionaires. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we've <laughs> got to get the website up and running properly, haven't we? We could put a merch section on there, and that, I think that would yeah, be quite good. good. That'd yeah. be good. Excellent stuff. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for wearing the shirt and repping, as they say. Um, let's go over to um, uh, th this guy. We just can't get rid of him, can't shake him, Mr. Kent Spong. Hello. 
Can you tell we us don't want to get rid of him. No, we don't. Of course we don't. <laughs> Every time I, he says, am I on this week? I said, of course you're bloody on. Are you sure? Yes, I'm bloody sure. <laughs> yeah. How, well, how's, things in, how's things in Spongland? How's the shed going and all that stuff? Oh. Have you uncovered anything else new since last night? No, they've been out there with the pneumatic drill today. Oh, nice. Um, breaking up the concrete. But I had, I did have a little um, thought, which is I'm wondering whether they will turn up on Monday. <laughs> um, because it's three you... Russian guys. And I realised oh, when I was having a sh- shower tonight that I was um, sporting a knitted Ukrainian flag mm. on my T-shirt. I went, oh, they probably didn't know this. <laughs> Chances are, if there are Russians in here in the UK, they probably would be on your side anyway. So, well, I'm, I'm well, speculating. They didn't say of anything. No, no, no. But, but they very wifey. Mm. But God, he's potato. Um, so, uh, have you? So last night on your and we do inverted commas show, um, <laughs> you you revealed that you had found a tube of chips. Mm. Yes. What can you tell us? What they were. McDonald's, I think, McDonald's. <laughs> once. No, um, it was a tube of uh, SSM 2030s, which is VCOs for the Mark 1 and Mark 2 Profit 5s. Oh. Which is a shame, really, because there's no way I'm letting one of those machines back in my house ever. <laughs> <laughs> so you've so, sort of found a little gold mine there, because with the prices these days, they must be worth a pretty penny. The stuff I found this week has been fantastic. It's, mm. it's like Line of Witch in the Wardrobe. Yeah, sounds, sounds like, like a... opening cupboards and going, oh, I then. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, it's been a lot of interesting Excellent. stuff. Mm, sounds like a fun mm. week in the Spong household. Well, thank you for joining us, as always. Uh, more from you later. And, of course, um, we were due to have um, a guest this week, um, somebody I've been looking forward to chatting with, but unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond our control, um, he's had to postpone, but he will be back. We are going to get him back, so don't worry. Um, we, we were going to have Starsky Carr on the show, and he's one of the, the finer kind of synth YouTube reviewers. Um, you yeah, know, there's, there's good ones and bad ones, and he's definitely one of the good ones. Um, and so I was looking forward to chatting with him. Um, but unfortunately, that's not taken place. But what we have for the next 50 minutes um, or so is the one and the only, the legend, that is Ty Unwin. I love hey. that build-up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're is, not the top this, guest. You're, you're, this is who, this this is is who we filler. really wanted, yeah. but, but yeah. we couldn't get him this week. So instead... <laughs> instead yeah. <laughs> you are you are a a superb fill in, shall we say? Oh, believe no, th- me. Thank not. you, thank you for agreeing to come on at such short notice. No, 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 it's absolutely fine. I'm sorry that I can't do the full two hours. But no, no. Well, the reason you can't is because it's your birthday this Sunday, and you've got it's, celebrations it's... of one form or another. So, um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Happy yeah. birthday. Thank you. In I'm advance. I'm going to be. Yeah, I would 20... sing. 27 again again yes yeah. you would have been 28 but you were sick of you weren't you <laughs> <laughs> anyway so how, how's everything in your world are you still busy up to the proverbials in yeah it's, yeah I, I i am it's uh yeah I, i'm yeah it, i am busy mainly because the the last project i did overran by two months and so wow. the projects that i was meant to start back at the beginning of january uh i'm now starting you know this like within the last week or so and um and of course everybody's coming going hello we've been really patient <laughs> since january <laughs> and uh you know can we all have you now and everyone wants me at the same time but it's it's fine it's oh, okay if it's... everyone wants you you're popular oh no 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 so we've got a game <laughs> you're really <laughs> making more of this when they see everyone wants me <laughs> it's the fact that there's a contract sign they have no choice <laughs> they're stuck with me oh, and dear. i've sure completely that's... messed them around by being late to the party i'm sure that's not the case but, um no it's all good it's it's yeah. it's Fine. Yeah. yeah, work is good. Um, work is um, good. And the main thing is, I'm back down in the studio rather than um, nice on the, the dining um, table. On the dining <laughs> table, which seems to be my studio for ages now. So it's yeah. great to be back down there. Mm. So yeah, all good. All good. Anything that we can expect to hear on our television screens from you in the immediate future? Is there anything? Well, I know that the, I know that Attenborough thing I did. The mm-hmm. the the. Can I say it now? I think I can. And it's a dinosaurs one with that. Okay. I, I think that's. I think that's on an Easter, so that's not far oh, that's, away. That's looking, that's looking I forward think to that. so. So, uh, but apart from that, I, honestly, they don't tell. I genuinely, they don't tell me. I yeah. I used to rely on, when my mum was alive. I literally used to rely on my mum 
to just call me and go, <laughs> you know that program you did? <laughs> is it on TV? I don't know. No one tells me anything. So, so this Attenborough one, this is the one where you, um, at my behest, you you squeezed in a DX7 Seven Bell. Bell, just for you. Yeah. I love you. Wow. <laughs> yeah, completely ruined the entire piece. But Shut it's... Up. <laughs> I, I, I pro- honestly, I, was, I promised you I would, and yes, I'm a man of did. my word. So, and I've heard it, and it is there. It is um, there. Yeah, cannot yeah. wait for that. Really yeah. want to look forward. Believe me, I can. <laughs> <laughs> well listen thank you ever so much for coming on we're going to make the most of you while we have you um as everybody does and um thanks to everyone that's in the chat room it's somebody and uh, somebody whizzed by it was jason jason crash wasn't it you, yeah, you did flash yeah. it up on the screen yeah uh, for kent's cloud he doesn't need a cloud lifter fund i gave him one he's got <laughs> one it's just his microphone lifter. yeah and a cloud lifter. <laughs> it's, it's his microphone technique that's what it is um <laughs> But thank you ever so much uh, for that donation. It's absolutely superb, and it will go into the kitty, and uh, we will spend it wisely, um, maybe on Super Booth tickets or something like that. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, um, let's crack it. There's not a huge amount of news um, to be going through, but uh, we're going to kick off the first thing with this, which came out on, well, yesterday. And we spoke about it the week before because we had Mitchell Sigmund from Cherry Audio on the show who told us as much as he could. And now we can reveal the entire thing. enough of that because it goes on a little bit longer than i thought welcome welcome to 1986 i know i thought it was like a 30 second thing it says it's about yeah. two minutes long that one um so this is it this is cherry audio's dream synth ds1 to give it its full name it came out yesterday and uh, as we spoke you know we spoke to mitchell sigmund last week who did the uh, the gui design and came up with a lot of the concepts and he threw those at the tech guys and said here you go this is what i want make this uh, and if you want to catch up with that, it's on our YouTube channel. Just go and watch that after after this show, of course. Um, but it's a it's a cracking little piece of equipment, and its uh, full price is fifty nine bucks, but it's on offer as they always do at th- a mere thirty nine dollars, which is really not a lot at all. I, I for... didn't realise it was that cheap. I know. I mm. thought they were going to stick this out at ninety nine because yeah. we were very lucky that um, Dan and Mitchell gave us a copy to play with each. And I thought, yeah, this isn't going to... Because this is not like a, one of the, the clone types. They've kind of gone full out on this. This will probably be a $99 one. And I wouldn't be... It wouldn't... To me, it wouldn't uh, be massively overpriced. But it's not... It's a mere 39 You can go and buy it now from cherryaudio.com. Um, basically, uh, if I, I'll try and surmise what it is. It's a three-oscillator, three-LFO synth with a um, an Oberheim-style 12 uh, dB per octave filter. Uh, it's got an arpeggiator. It's also got a separate string synth element. It's got distortion phaser, modulation effects, delays, and reverbs, one of which is called Galactic and is pretty lovely. Um, you've got lots of um, voice assign modes, and there's an arpeggiator in there, and you can split the the keyboard with you know between the synth and the strings. Um, it's got loads of modulation routing possibilities. Um, it's... It's even got an analog drift knob, so it gives, kind of makes it a little bit more authentic sounding. I haven't really explored that too much and done too much side by sides. It comes stacked with about 1,700 presets. So there's lots of things to, to kind of flick through and get a, a good idea of what it can do. It's also MPE compatible uh, as well. I can't test that because I have, I don't have, I'm not, yeah, this is Rob hasn't got the Hydrosynth show again. I don't have really? an MPE 
uh, capable keyboard. So I couldn't tell. So I'm, I'm hoping you guys have maybe had a little go on that. Uh, but before you carry on, no, sorry, uh, just mm, a quick okay. question. If you got the DX1 up and running, could you use that? Uh, no, because I don't believe no. it outputs poly aftertouch. Right. So it wouldn't oh. it wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, although, yeah, so it's just one of those things, unfortunately. Um, so somebody give me a hydrocin. Um <laughs> So, Ben, come on, tell us, what did you think of this? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I really was impressed, genuinely impressed. Uh, I wasn't sure what to think at first when it came out, because as you, as, you, as we all know, Cherry Audio have previously done recreations of well, of versions of classic synths in the past, the, their take on it. And this one is a, a, a kind of departure from that. Mm -hmm. And it... It's very similar in a lot of ways to things like the JD800 where you've got uh, PCM uh, samples as your waveforms, yeah. but you've also got, I think it, is it single, sam uh, sing single cycle? You have single uh, cycles. Like, yeah, yeah, which are a bit like wavetables kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's another one as well, but I can't remember what it is. One uh, shots. And, yeah, one shots. And you've also got the analog modeling. Yep. capability in there uh, you mentioned that it's got three oscillators uh, which is true mm -hmm. but each one has got, two. Know, uh, it has, it has got like two sound sources yeah so you could have well you can have any combination really in them so you can have you could have all analog modeling and all the way through or pcm yeah. on one side and it, it's i think it's quite nifty the way that, that you've just got a balance uh you know a b kind of yeah. balance controls for that yeah and a really uh, in the mixer for each oscillator as well. I, I think this is a superb touch, and you could have this on hardware synths and everything. A solo button, which mm -hmm. the amount of times that you you, you know you want to focus on one of the oscillators because something yeah. isn't right. Just having that solo button there, you haven't got to remember where your levels were exactly because mm -hmm. you know you're turning it down on the mixer. So it, it it's good. It's really good. Minor. Minor quibble with it would be the interface is a little bit like overwhelming somehow. Yeah, it's like you put it on and it's like whoa, it's it, it just like some shading or something to just separate those. It's exactly those what I was saying. To, yeah, uh, was it to you, Kent, this morning? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, th I, I think a bit of colouring had helped there yeah. because let's let's bring it up on the screen. So yeah, I mean. It's like a grey background with this pale blue kind of bordering and then, you know, the buttons go, you know, a yellowy and that's it really. And I, I said to Kent this morning when we were talking about it, that if they'd have just taken that oscillator section, given it a slightly different background, a bit yeah. like, um, what's that, the Moog synth? Is it the grandmother that has the, the yeah. different coloured? Yeah, Matriarch. Oh, the Matriarch, yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. maybe not as bold and as, as glaring, but, you know, just yeah. some kind of difference. So you know that when you look at the centre, that's the oscillator section, and this is the filter section over here. This is the LFO section here. This is the effects. Just to make it kind of stand, stand out. But once you've kind of got used to it, like muscle memory oh, with your yeah. eyes, you know where to yeah. look and everything, don't well, you? So. Once you have adjusted to it, it's not that bad at all. Uh, and mm. you, you do get... But I just think that would make it a little bit easier. Just yeah. ju just a little bit more comfortable on the eye, yeah. I think. You can focus in as well, can't you? On a, yeah, that was, a that's a really neat little feature because you just press the focus button and it just gives you you know yeah. a corner of the, uh, of the plug-in. Then you can just scroll to the other corner and then you that, go down to that one. And, yeah. That so is quite good, but quite handy. I think it'd, it'd be easy to just colour those sections, even if it was the blue boxes. It doesn't even have to be the yeah. backgrounds. You yeah, know, just maybe. just to help define it a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I did have some more quibbles, but I can't remember what they were. Oh yeah, uh, you can put the effects on the synth engine. Yeah, which All the is strings. Those, those three oscillators that we mentioned er earlier, or the strings. And I, I was just making, it was like while I was making my first sound on it, I wanted to take one of the synth oscillators out of the effects and I couldn't do it. It's like all of the oscillators are, are processed by the effects. Right, okay. Uh, you can't have like, say, you know, if you just want something to be a bit sharper, you mm -hmm. know, that would be really nice if you could just bypass the effects on one oscillator maybe. Yeah. Um uh, Apart from that, it, it's it's really easy to use. It sounds really good. Yeah, I love I love the idea of it. I, I'm a big fan of the JD800 anyway. So mm -hmm. 
like this kind of synthesis is it, it is <laughs> it is the kind of a dream idea because you've yeah. got everything that you want in the the filters are quite nice because they do have a retro sound as you mm -hmm. heard in the demo um i wouldn't have minded more uh envelopes i know it's a bit cheeky like but another mm -hmm. another assignable envelope would have been quite yeah. nice uh, yeah. but, but the the yeah it's a it's a cracker from me uh i think it's yeah. It's brilliant value for money at that price. And yeah, absolutely. I, I think a lot of people will get a lot of use out of it. Yeah. Kent, you, when, when we were talking earlier today, you mentioned there was one little issue. And obviously, you know, tell, tell us what you like about it as well. But um, the the MIDI learn function, you, you, you found something there that was a little bit iffy. Yeah, well, it's, it's part of a, an ongoing issue that I had with it, which is when you select the uh, MIDI learn, it produces a, 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 a this window here. Yeah. Now, on, what it's doing on my screen is mm -hmm. uh, expanding it and pushing it off my screens. Yeah. So at the moment, on my screen that I'm looking at, it's off the edge, but this yeah. manages to compensate. Yeah. But you imagine you can't see that. I can't see yeah. that filter. So you, you sort of like scroll it over. And you go, right, okay, MIDI uh, learn. Then you've got to scroll it back again if you want to go and do the filter from this, sense. which is a go-to, isn't it, normally? Yeah. Select it, then go back again. So then take your MIDI learn and uh, assign it to whatever routing you were going to put it to. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, yeah, but like we said, you know, uh, you know, a, a little update, you know, a 1.1 1 .1 and yeah. just sort of like uh, make it a window underneath or something. But, but uh, yeah, the, um, the phaser is a bit hot. Yeah, I found the um, distortion a bit hot as well. Yeah, I was constantly bringing it down more and more and more. But of course, you yeah. go to the next patch and you have to go and do it again. Do it again. Um, yeah. So, but teasing problems. It's not. It's not like um, not showstoppers, are they? No, it's not like it's a polymove power supply or something like that, which basically <laughs> needs to be shot in the face. But um, the other thing was, um, I signed uh, MPE. Oh yeah. From the Hydra um, mm -hmm. to the filter, and. It wasn't controlling the filter polyphonically. It was doing it in mono. Okay. So if you push one key down, mm -hmm. yes, it will open. You push another one down, it won't open because it's already open. Oh. So Ooh. I've yet to look harder to see if that, but literally at that point, it seems to be very sort of like a uh, single channel MPE. Right, which is okay. Weird, to say the least. Mm. Yeah. Interesting I stuff. I didn't try it in MP, MPE, so I don't know. No. Well, I can't. So. Yeah. Ty, your thoughts? Uh, I only got a couple of hours on it, and uh, I went from thinking it was okay to not really liking it to actually thinking, oh, there's quite a lot uh, positive. Um, Mm. As long as uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I I mean, I started off going through the presets and they didn't really do anything for me, mm. and then um, the sound itself wasn't wasn't really kind of grabbing it. The quality of the sound wasn't really grabbing me at all. And I, t I a lot of it, I tell you, is the fact that I went in. If you're going to call a synth a dream synth, <laughs> I kind of want it to be really, you know really good and i just yeah, wasn't yeah. i wasn't getting it i just absolutely wasn't getting it but then i basically just then just thought okay maybe i'm missing something so i went in deeper and started programming some stuff from scratch and um what i actually realized is essentially the, the problem i had at the beginning was it was just sounding like i'll be honest with you just like kind of any early 90s kind of uh workstation-y kind mm -hmm. of thing with nicer filters. That's all mm -hmm. it was. The filters were nice, mm -hmm. but it was just sounding very 90s. And yeah. it was just, it was just what, you know, I've, it, yeah, it wasn't doing it for me. Sure. But then I suddenly thought, hang on a second, what is this reminding me of? And I went through all the samples, you know, the one shots and the cycles mm -hmm. and all this kind of thing. And I was thinking, hang on a minute. And I was soling them all and going, this is just kind of like a non-sonic VFX. Yeah. Or an SQ80 mm -hmm, or yeah. all of that line. It was all the on. And the moment I got into my head, hang on a minute, this is kind of like an on Sonic. Mm. And I kind of took myself back to that kind of, okay, now when I used an on Sonic, what was I doing with it? And there's a lot of similarities to the three oscillators. 
obviously, you know, kind of, uh, there's a lot that goes beyond that. But I just kind of went back into that mode and I suddenly kind of started to kind of like it. And, and it's one of those that I think you really, mm. if you just do it on a surface level and just expect it mm. to be all sings to all men, mm. it, it's, it's not, it's not at all. But I think if you go in with, think it's seeing it in a particular, um, having a particular character, because it's still, it kind of has that cherry audio sound. And mm. I actually compared the sound of it to some of their other stuff. And yeah. I'll be honest with you, as a sound quality, I don't think it's as good as some of their other stuff. Um, but there's something that the, 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 you know, kind of the, all of the parts together make something that's a bit different. And so, yeah. I, so I'm not being damning about it. I, I went in expecting to be, it to be something that it wasn't. And mm -hmm. then the moment I kind of looked at it from where I, it was, I was actually quite like it. And I did actually come up with some really, really, you know, kind of nice sounds. And then mm -hmm. the bottom line has to be, <laughs> you know, what I'm going to say <laughs> it's $39 for God's sake. Yeah. And yeah. from that point of view, it's, you know, we don't want to be using words like bargain, but it's, it's incredibly good value for $39. And it's that classic thing of you can quite happily produce whole tracks just yeah. using the examples of this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I just the whole on Sonic thing. That yeah. Once you get your head into that kind of mode, it kind yeah. of really makes sense. Yeah. So I'm glad I've got it. It's a, it's a good synth. Yeah. I mean, to be fair to to Cherry Audio, they do state that this is inspired by exactly what you were saying. You know, those kind of in Sonic, um, Prophet VS. Uh, you know, those kind of late '80s, early '90s sample based instruments. So it's um, that's kind of what they were aiming for. So. It, They've kind of hit the mark in that respect, I suppose. Absolutely. If that's what, if that's what they've gone for, yeah. they've absolutely hit that one. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. I, I just think it's, you know, for what it is, I've been sat here playing with it. I've had it on all day, and sort of in between jobs, I've been sort of just playing with it and just tinkering, going through some of the presets. And, you know, with as, as we had, Kent and I had this conversation today where it was coming through a little bit hot, the distortion and the phase. I think the effects overall could do with just dialing back a little bit. But there is, um, there's a volume control in, you know, in the master section. Um, so you can, um, you know, just kind of keep things down that way. But as you say, the uh, every time you change a patch, everything goes back to what it was, was programmed before. So maybe you can make the master section independent and just leave that. Um, be nice, but other than that, I mean, it's, it's for thirty nine. We do think dollars. Can I just say that mm. the the string synth at the end, which is almost like it's almost like a kind of throwaway. Yeah, just a kind of oh, we'll just take a string synth at the end. It sounds lovely. The actual <laughs> string. Forget the rest of it. Forget yeah. all the other. Just There's the a... string synth is not. It sounds yeah. lovely. It's a nice string synth. Yeah. But, but you pay oh, you pay thirty odd quid for the string synth. No, no, but you know what? I'm not having you on. Joking aside, if yeah. someone gave me that strings infection and said you were going to charge you thirty nine dollars, I'd buy it yeah. just yeah, for that yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's that's just the string section on its own going through a few effects. But yeah, it's it's a lovely thing, and you you can just stick that underneath anything and it just gives it a, a nice quality yeah. what i also love about this is and, and mitchell alluded to it he said you know but literally everything is kind of uh, modulatable um and there's and the way they've done it is really nice because under each say for example the filter so under each knob in the filter there is this modulation section that's kind of you know boarded off and you just click on the button and then you just choose your mod source it's really really simple um, and you can get some really, you know, nice modulations going on there. It's it's could you, it's, it's nicely done. Can you show us that, Rob? Or? I can, yes. Because um, yeah. it is a it is a really good system. I think uh, it, it's so simple, but it's dead easy to route things where you want. You can yeah. even modulate with the arpeggiator as well, which is so. Yeah. So, for example, here, here's the filter in the top right hand corner. Let's let's put the let's use the uh, the focus section here, uh, and we go over to the filter. And so under each of these filter settings, you've got these modulation settings. And so you can uh, for, you can have two modulation sources for the cutoff and one for each of the resonance notch uh, envelope and keyboard tracking. So you just click on the button and then you can't see it there because it's on my screen and because I'm in this focus uh, mode. Uh, let me, yeah. actually, let me, so let me, let me go back out now and I'll, I'll do this here. 
Uh, and again, you can't see it because of the way the system works. But there is a drop down menu, yeah. take my word for it. Um, and you can then choose uh, your, your mod source, whether it's the oscillators, the envelopes, the LFOs. Uh, and of course, each oscillator, don't forget, has its own pitch LFO, as well as the three individual LFOs as well. So mm. there's so many things that you can mess around with um, to get that. And you can put channel pressure on there. And of course, there's MPE, but I, I haven't even gotten into that because there's no way I can, I can mess around with it. So, um, yeah, it's it's a really, I mean, there's a lot going on. You're going to have to sort of spend a bit of time with it. But um, it's it's just a few little tweaks here and there, I think, and it would be really, really good. Um, but as it stands, it's a very, very nice thing. Oh, it is, uh, yeah. And I like the scalability. You, you you can choose your zoom level just by dropping down the um, the menu here. So you can have, or you can, or you can use your keyboard to zoom in and out, or you can just grab the corner of the synth and just drag and you know whatever to do that. It's just very quick and easy and simple. Um, the only thing I don't like, and there is just one thing, is this: this the little QWERTY keyboard keyboard. Yeah, I I like to see a full keyboard at the bottom of the synth if I want the keyboard. But anyway, that's just a tiny, tiny thing. But yeah, all in all, fantastic work from Cherry Audio. $39, available from cherryaudio.com now. But if you want a copy of this and you're watching this show live, so unfortunately, if you're watching on Catch Up, sorry, you don't dial in because you will be your calls may be uh, charged. No, is that, what do they say now on the TV? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah for stupid people that that dial into shows that were 10 years old or something. Yeah. Anyway, look. Training purposes. This is it, yeah. So we're going to give you a cop. We're going to give one lucky viewer live today, at the end of this show, we're going to give you a copy of Dream Synth, free of charge. Um, we'll get it uh, loaded into your Cherry Audio account. That's the only thing you need to have is a Cherry Audio account, and you just go and sign up. It's completely free. Once you've done that... What we'd like you to do throughout the show between now and when we finish around nine ish is put a comment in the chat, but you've got to start it with the word dream synth so that we it just helps us figure it out and put it into the bucket, so to speak. And just tell us in as few words as possible. And there is a limitation in the, uh, the YouTube chat. So only do one. Just keep it nice and brief and maybe a little bit humorous, maybe a little bit, you know, funny or whatever. We'll choose the best one. Tell us what would constitute your dream synth so you know a million filters and you know, gaz you know gazillion oscillators or you know something from this and something from that come up with something funny witty and in less than 200 characters i think what it is in there so if you can fit it into there and we will pick one out that we think is the the, the most amusing or the best or you know most interesting and that lucky person will go away with a copy of Cherry Audio's Dream Synth, absolutely gratis. Um, Superb. There you go. So, and a big thanks to Dan and Mitchell at Cherry Audio for sorting that out for us. So, uh, we really appreciate the support. Right. Um, let's see what else have we got to talk about. Um, oh yes, there's these. The most confusing um, launch of a, a, a synthesizer. Um, for some while definitely roland have uh launched the the phantom o series um let me just get rid of that here we go so this is the phantom o the 06 the 07 and the 08 now these look like really nice kind of stripped down versions i think somebody i read somewhere that somebody said this is roland doing what yamaha did with the montage this is their modi x moment um and so you've got these Phantom O series keyboards, which are kind of lighter weight. Um, they're compatible with the cloud. So if you have a Roland Cloud account, you can uh, swap things in between you know, the, the synth and that as well. Um, but the thing that's really confusing is that um, you've, got, you've already got the Roland Phantom 6, 7, and 8. Now you've got the 06, the 07, and the 08. And there's also the FA06, FA07, FA08. So nine different models um, and three different kind of stylings, shall we say. But this is, you know, just kind of like, a, it seems like a stripped back, lightweight version of the Phantom Workstation. Now, I have absolutely no experience with Roland Workstations whatsoever. This is not my uh, my thing. But who wants to take this one 
first. Anyone got any sort of burning comments about this? Um, I, I'll jump in if nobody else wants to. Uh, oh yes, God, but... I wanted to. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was when I first seen it. I contacted you, Rob, didn't I? Because I thought did, they, yeah. these have been out ages. The F F A O A and F A. <laughs> What's going on here? And to me, just like glancing at it, like inebriated in some way. Like it was. Uh, <laughs> it just. It just looked like the other one. It was like, I don't know. These have been out ages and ages. And then, obviously, looking into it, I just think it's a bit of a marketing uh, disaster that, like, because if it wasn't for this show, I, it would have gone unnoticed by me, this. And I am a potential customer of this product, I think. Not, not, I think I'm an intended customer of this product because I think mm -hmm. it's geared up for a live keyboard player but not so much the the person who uses the nord gear and that you know it, it it it's i think it's the lower and lower end without sounding rude because i'm including myself in this bracket where you might want to play backing tracks through it you might you know it's it, it's not like you're in 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 a big band but this is the centerpiece of a smaller unit i think and it's totally geared up for that. Everything about it, it works with main stage, it works with Ableton Live. Um, the sounds in it are, are pretty useful for a live environment. And, and everything just seems to me to be, it's lightweight. It, it's just a, a, intended for the, for the live use. Mm. Because they don't open it up with other doors at the minute. I don't think you can like use it with Cubase and, and that like is a the, there's a built-in template for that. I think it's just the others. Um, I've seen a few things pop up in the chat since we've started talking about this. Somebody mentioned that the pads don't have velocity, which uh, I think is a bit weird. Um, yeah, this is why I think it's drawn that comparison with yeah um, and, and with the Modi X. And somebody said there's no aftertouch, but I'm pretty sure there's got to be aftertouch on this, aren't there? Well, there is Robin, somebody who... I know Richard Hilton is chomping at the bit to get one of these. Absolutely. Well, oh, right, yeah. Ideal um, for him. Ideal for him, these machines. Yeah, Richard, I, um, Richard, I've, I've, I've just invited Richard to come in and tell us, because if, if Richard thinks this is great for what he does i want to hear what that is so um, think, as soon as he gets the link we'll bring yeah it in. I, I think it'd be great for what i do i, I actually do I, I was very dismissive of it when i first saw it i thought this is just uh, roland gonna come in for a load more slating again you know but it, it, it's it's actually a pretty good product it's yeah you know it does a lot of stuff and the thing, it seems yeah the, the thing is they if you know they're doing here what they what core did with like nautilus and yamaha have done with the modi x and all that but at the end of the day i i totally get that people are saying you know there's no velocity on the pads and there's no aftertouch and there's not this and but that makes perfect sense because at the end of the day if you look what it does do compared to the the you know the original ones they have to cut back somehow and so some things have to change because can you imagine if it did have aftertouch it did have velocity on the pads people are going to be going well why should i pay the extra for the for the big yeah. ones when it does yeah. everything the whole point is what they have kept is essentially the engine and the fact that it's compatible with the original phantom sounds and the iCloud stuff and you, you kind of have to accept that they've got to make cuts at some some somewhere along the line and i have to say for the difference in price, I think the cuts, obviously I don't, the quality won't be there in terms of the build quality. The keyboard action will always be one of the first things to go. The screen, is the screen smaller? I don't know, but it looks maybe like the screen's a bit smaller. So you're gonna, you're gonna, they're gonna have to make cuts somewhere. And it's not, I mean, it's not a product that's aimed at, aimed at me at all, but not having velocity on the pads and not having aftertouch I mean, realistically, what else is there that it's it's not doing in in very simple terms that the big ones are doing? Mm. Because I mean, if you look at the price difference, there's quite a big price difference between them, and they've got to make cuts somewhere. So, mm. you know, I mean, it's 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 not for me, but I mean, I've played on the on the big phantoms and. You know they're they they're great machines. Mm. If I was in the kind of market for a workstation, I'll be honest with you, I'd have one of those over a montage, 
uh, even though I've got a montage. But mm. I don't I don't see the montage. Is, the montage is not a workstation. It's you know. But the, what they're trying to do with the original Phantom is move it away from just being a workstation. The, the synthesis engines in that are great. But the fact that it's compatible with that, I mean, mm. for the money, I think it's a I think it's a good product. Yeah. You know. Well, let's ask someone who is incre incredibly enthusiastic about it. Mr. Richard Hilton's in the house. Hey. How hey, are you? Rich. No, babe. We can't hear you. Oh, oh no. You're muted. <laughs> Take a drink. Come on, Rich. Come on, you can do it. Come on. How embarrassing for an end. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Go on. Go on. You can do this. Go. <laughs> Oh, oh no! What? Oh, he's gone. One oh, minute. He's going to be back right back. One minute. I'll be okay. right back. There you go. There we go. Right. Well, we'll bring him in just a second. Um, Ben, <laughs> you have from the Bronx. <laughs> no, so Ben, you have spoken about this. It's this guy down here, Kent. I, I guess phantoms aren't your thing. I I haven't been down that route. Okay. Um, the, the, the most workstationy thing I I think I've ever really had is the um, Oasis. Mm. Um, so I, no, I, I I haven't really bought a lot of Roland stuff over the years to be honest. Um, but like I say, I, I, I've spoken with Richard about it, and I can see why he's very excited about this because it's you know lighter and smaller. Um, so it's like you know sort of making a product that's ideal for people who want to tour yeah because sod having to drag a phantom around with you indeed you know what I mean? it's a bit of a lump isn't it? The, other, so, the other the other thing is it's also the kind of product that you could you could kind of have as a as a second keyboard to you know in a live rig it mm. almost feels like it would be a great to have something above maybe a you know, kind of a montage or a, a, a Nord stage or something like that as a second keyboard to do all the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, it seems like a perfect product for, and you can't say not a lot of money because it's still, it's yeah. still such a lot of money, but compared to the, what you're getting, I think yeah. it's, I think it's, I, you know, I don't think they deserve slating at all. I no. completely agree about the names, the na whole name thing. Yeah, is, that's very yeah, 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 It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. But, but there we right. go. Right. Let's see if we can get it working this time. Yeah, I don't care what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. My, my needs very specifically on stage have nothing to do with any of the above cited criticisms, which are perfectly valid and understandable. Um, I don't need pads that have velocity. In fact, if I need pads at all, they're for one shot yeah triggering which i need to happen as consistently as possible mm -hmm. so the fact that there's no velocity on the pads means nothing to me the fact that there's no aftertouch none of what i do on stage requires aftertouch or even suggests that i might want to use it and you know i love this thing so it's not yeah. like yeah. i'm not aware of the benefits of aftertouch what it has is a tremendous feature set for the money and theoretically one of these keyboards mm -hmm. those are the things that matter to me is the rompler functionality and that keyboard right everything right. else is optional to me however the options in this thing are much greater than the options in the stage pianos i've been using particularly as it relates to being able to hook it up to rolling cloud and pull down a bass from a juno 106 when i need one or whatever and um yeah. the reliability the availability the fact that it's not terribly expensive anyway it's only two grand i think for the 88 note uh weighted key version um, it has, it, I watched it map a folder full of samples in like 10 seconds across a keyboard. I was blown away. Do I need to do that? No, but it's actually a really cool thing that it mm. does. There's a whole mm. pile of really, really cool. Th the demo video blew my mind mm. and it sounded really good. And really that's what I need. I mean, it, is it great for everybody? No, obviously not. And it's, and for people who do care about performing mm. with aftertouch in a live circumstance, it's not for them. But that's not what I do. Um, what I do is, you know, deliver the goods consistently every night the same way, you know, playing parts mm. that are orchestrations of the appropriate to the thing. And I do, if it's got the ROM, if it can make the sounds I need, it's a beautiful thing for me because I'm playing 20-year-old 20, 20 gear that's hard to get in any kind of rental situation. So the advantage to me is that this thing might become more ubiquitous and more available. Furthermore, 
I'm not that familiar with the Phantom line that precedes this thing. And so the differences between this and that and what it used to do and what this one doesn't do and all of that stuff actually has no meaning to me if all of that, those other criteria are met. Mm-hmm. With you all the way, Rich. With you uh, all the way. That's my spiel on this thing. It's very uh, purpose specific. And this particular purpose has almost nothing to do with velocity on drum pads. I mean, it. it, it I mean, could it? Yeah, maybe it could. But I, I really... Would, is that really true? You, you. I mean, if you're using that thing to program drums, there's one velocity coming out of it. <laughs> is that really? I don't know. I, um, I, I, I'd be surprised. But if it's true, I'm fine with that. And if I have yeah. to use trigger samples on stage, I'm going to shut the velocity off because I don't yeah. want variations mm. in that. No, very true. Output. Yeah, very true. No, that's all really good. I mean, what a wonderful world this is. You can just bring in somebody like Richard to tell you (laughs) stuff like this is great. Fantastic. Stick around if you want. Oh, sure, if you don't mind. Yeah, No, of course we do. I I think I'd be be interested in one as well. Really, I could use, you know, from what I've seen in the demo. Because what do you use on stage? I've got, um, I I use main stage, but I've got a Nectar P6 controller. And a little Yamaha oh, MX-49. Okay. Uh, I use the MX-49 as my audio interface and get some of the motif sounds on it. Because it's that is, that's really good value, that thing, because it, it's dirt cheap. I think I only paid like 300 and odd quid for it. And it's got like all the motif sounds in it. it it's, the build quality is horrific. It's like the worst. <laughs> it's it's the worst built thing I've ever seen in my life in a, any area. It's just awful. Uh, the keys are awful, but it's dead cheap. It's dead light. You can pick it up with one hand and uh, and throw it on the stand. So something like this, I, I, I'm all for it. You know, it's yeah. just the comments in the chat <clears throat> that that they uh, <clears throat> alarm me a little bit because I didn't know about that. Um, <clears throat> I. But I see, uh, I see the point about if you're just doing one shot things, you want them to be consistent. You don't, yeah, you, yeah. you don't want them to have any variation in them at all. And I don't really recall using after touch myself that much live. So it, 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 it's velocity that's important, isn't it? Live, I suppose. After yeah. touch is it, it is wonderful on something like the hydrosynth, but it tends to be something that you've got to really take your time with and, and it's not something that I, d- I think that you could use comfortably in a live situation anyway so i, I do i do get them them points and i do agree with them it, it is uh i think it's uh, they're not cheap you know it, it is good value compared to the other uh the other phantom the full the full blown version but yeah they're still fairly costly like because when it came out i thought oh i've just bought that key lab 88 thing i could have got one of these you know and <laughs> had a bit more stuff but it's you What's know it's a, it's a different price in it you know, like yeah. quite a bit quite a bit different so yeah mm. one, That's one, interesting, other, yeah. one other thing that mm. it does that excites me that comes from the legacy of the old and sonic gear actually is it has buttons on the left end that allow you to invoke on a temporary basis on, yeah, on okay. you know uh, uh layers that would not appear normally in the regular keyboard presentation and that's kind of useful for me in a performance way because right. there are times where i might like to switch in uh, a particular string hit or something as part of the performance and this used to be this goes back to and sonic eps had this mm-hmm. um had a pair of buttons that could be used in four different configurations or three different configurations to get you alternate layer uh combinations availability and on a temporary basis that's also useful to me as a performance mm. thing. Yeah. Well, it does seem to be, you know, geared towards uh, the performance element more than anything else, doesn't it? But, you know, th- let's bring all that functionality and, and put it ease of use at your fingertips on the stage. The synth- also, the, synth- the cross-platform synthesis features that they're touting, which I don't claim to fully understand, and they've got a fancy name for it that I don't even remember. But there is something to do with the integration between the sounds in the instrument, their cloud sounds, and the other instruments that similarly similarly support their synth platform, whatever that thing was called. I, I've got a Zen- 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 Zencore. Zencore, Zencore, thank you. Yeah. And so there is some, and there are also, as was pointed out by Ben, some very cool uh, interfacing capabilities with certain DAWs 
notably mm -hmm. uh, Logic and Ableton, whereby you can actually create an Ableton track on the thing, throw it into record, record it, and have it appear as audio in the host computer. Yeah, and that's that's kind of like kind of cool for mm -hmm. times where you might want to do that. I mean, am I likely to do that anytime soon? No, but it's a cool thing and yeah. uh, does something cool with Logic as well for everybody who's diving into their Dolby Atmos dreams. Um, <laughs> Indeed. No, it's well, there you go. That's the Roland uh, Phantom O series, not to be confused with the Phantom Non O series or the Phantom FA series. One, one for every day of the week and then a couple for whatever mm. ah, right um thank you for that gentlemen thank you richard that's great insight Sorry. as always um we've we've got uh time for another seven minutes are you on literally it, on the maybe, clock no no no, no. you look so keen it, to go no, no no not at all it could be it could be slightly longer so okay. you may have me for a few more minutes oh, i'll let you know well, I'll let no, you know no. when. we'll take as much of you as we can oh that's often been said <laughs> 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 um so let's see what have we got not to talk about now. Let's let's do this one because I'm going to leave the, the other bits to the end. Um, You're going to leave the Behringer ones to the end after I've gone, aren't you? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm doing it out of respect for you. I just I didn't so think you'd you do it, do it in whatever order. I'm not going to be. No, go on. Do whatever okay, well, you like. Oh, let, let's. Do you like. I mean, I'm I'm super conscious of the fact that uh, of the last two or three weeks, because of the way that they've had marketing diarrhea. Um, Behringer had just been announcing, 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 teasing and teasing and teasing. And actually this week, they actually delivered some demonstrations of the actual products um, that they've, they've been talking about. Although I do have my doubts about one of them in particular. So um, first of all, let's just talk about this thing. This isn't a demonstration, but this is uh, something that they announced. I believe it was today. Again, it's in this small form factor. And again, it comes with a caveat that um that it's designed um but it won't be available until they receive the chips and it's this thing the cs mini um let's bring this into the screen there we go all right cs mini um basically using their their modeling technology uh, or or, uh, no it says analog synthesizer so maybe it is genuine analog i don't know we don't know but this is a mini version which they claim will have three voice polyphony uh, and a few other bits and bobs as well in this kind of tiny, quite ugly form factor. But I reckon um, you could fit three CS voices in that. I've seen yeah. a voice card and <laughs> yeah. should go in that easily. Well, somebody did a lovely Photoshop where they took about three or four of these and lined them up next to you know, into one long thing and said, oh, at last, here is the, the Behringer CS80. <laughs> um, I'm not too sure what to make of all this. They think that this one is going to retail. Uh, is it? Is this going to be the 99 or the 49? Because they they had said this one's uh, 99. 99. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about specs of possibly. You know, uh, it says you know this is only a design. Uh, you know, sort of visual design at the moment. But they're talking about three note polyphony. Um, it's just a proposal, but you know, interesting nonetheless. Seeing as we have Mr. CS80 in the room, we'll go to him first. Uh, thoughts on this, Kent? Well, the first thing that strikes me is that there is about six sliders missing from the right section. Um, so good luck trying to make that sound like a CS80. Indeed. There's no initial um, attack, no initial level or anything in the, in the section. And uh, where's the sine wave volume? Yeah. Or, uh, well... I know it's cut down, but at least the CSO one had. There's nothing most of come there. Matches. There's nothing come there that in any way differentiates that as a CS80. That's just an analog synth. That's all that yeah. is with a CS logo on. Yeah, yeah. There's it's nothing true. come that that all the all the things that make a CS80 sound like a CS80. There is not a single one on there. Not one. I mean, yeah. Even you know, even as a you know, like just a three D mock up of an idea. You're not going to get the CS80 sound from that many controls on the front panel. No. No. Uh, but, um, I'm, sorry, I'm not in their defence, but they do say that, you know, these these designs, they're throwing them out there and they're getting feedback. So, you know, who knows? It might change. Um, well, there's your feedback. There you go. <laughs> what more do you want? <laughs> I think every, everything that somebody wants a CS80 for, 
that isn't it is it it's uh, i think they're wide of the mark even thinking of that mm. they just three note poly, uh, polyphonic i know it's only 99 quid like but it's just what you're going to use it for you might as well just throw the 99 quid away because you're probably never going to use it yeah <laughs> <laughs> what i thought when i saw this was they're going to charge 99 dollars for this um and they've been talking about doing a CS80 uh, in style instrument. Um, how much were they going to charge for that? I mean, they've been charging uh, for, for some of their larger synthesizers around the four five hundred pound mark mm. or dollars. Um, why would you want to buy one of these if maybe in six months' time or a year's time they're going to bring out you know a full you know ten voice polyphonic version? Um, I'm not. I can't kind of see the. Yeah, but it's a different. You know, this is a different market. I mean, I yeah. do. Gen I, I think this is a different market to even. You know, everyone. I don't think anyone's under any illusion that when they do bring out their CS80 clone, that it's it's going to be for the masses like this is. I mean, mm. you know, it's going to be up there. They can't do it for even if they. Uh, what they're basing on, you know, like the 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 monopoly, uh, monopoly and the mini move and all that kind of thing. The CS is going to have to be up around the thousand, twelve hundred pound mark, and mm. you can't really compare something that's ninety nine with something that's twelve hundred because no. the, the people, a lot of people that can afford one of these, could never even dream about affording a thousand quid or twelve hundred quid. You know, these mm. are these. Are, I think it's just a yeah, completely but you, you know where Berenger's mantra yeah. about it's saying about you know oh well what we're doing is we we are cloning these massively overpriced uh, classic synthesizers of yesteryear. And putting them into the hands of people with very little money. Well, then do it. Yeah. That isn't CS. Stop selling them stuff and going, well, we, yeah, they're supposed to be a CS. It's not. Stop doing it. Give them a CS then. Yeah. And stop fucking around. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. the thing is, whatever you want to say about Roland with the boutique stuff, and I know it's completely different types of synthesis and whatever, but when they... When they turn around and start promising that it sounds like a JD800 or it sounds like a JXAP or it sounds like a, you know, a, a Juno 6 or, you know, all of this kind of thing, it, they kind of do. And because, you know, kind of I, 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 some of the form factors, I don't, you know, I've got all the most of the boutiques, but yeah, some of them are too small. They are too small, but at least they do kind of, they kind of, do what they promise to do on the box and what the problem i kind of have with these little things is i just can't see how they can do what they promise to do if that makes sense and it's all yeah. right i mean you know kind of it's you know i've seen some of the chat with people saying well they're not saying it's a cs80 well they say it's a it, cs80 voice that's their yeah, description but which makes it a cso1 yeah. you know it's different <laughs> it's I don't know. I'm not trying to defend one against the other. Everyone mm. knows my views on on the company as a company. I don't need to go down that route because everyone knows mm. it. Um, but I just think this form factor for me, uh, I think it's just not, there's something just not quite right about it. Mm. It almost feels like this is the equivalent of just like a, it's just throw away. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I mean, you, you know, anyone that's really into Volkers could turn around and go, well, you haven't got a clue what you're talking about because you have lots of people in the world who love all the Volker series. And, you know, I've got a few Volkers and they're, they're fine. But even those as a form factor, it just doesn't. I don't know. I just don't know. It just doesn't. Maybe it's because I've got big fucking sausage fingers. Maybe that's <laughs> what it is. So um, Wagyu just pointed out and I saw this. Uh, they, they have proposed Eurorack versions of these to go into their range of stuff so that yeah that, that could be an interesting aspect <laughs> yeah. sausage finger uh sausage finger off here yeah it's all green yeah. um any thoughts on this rich uh mute oh <laughs> that, one, that one's on Hang me on. yeah here we go that one's on me. Um, cheers man <laughs> i just took my drink yeah um I see that there must be a market for these tiny little synths. And the fact that there are a lot of them across a lot of different manufacturers with all kinds of different capabilities and the fact that you can get one that sounds better than a JX-10 potentially um, is pretty cool. And the fact that they can talk to each other over various protocols is pretty cool. 
the fact that some of them are built around these membrane keyboards like uh, like the original synth AKS was and now mm -hmm. you've got micro freak and you know you've got these things and you've had stylophone and that's all right that's okay for certain things too i mean you can make and somebody pointed out in the chat that somebody will probably come out with some great music made on these things and i have no doubt that that's true because it's totally possible for somebody to do so um i how's this for a review it's not the worst idea they've ever had mm -hmm. <laughs> That's no. my review. Yeah, and do, do you know what? I actually, I read, I read something. I think it was earlier on today. I think it was. I read uh, there was one comment that someone wrote that really I just thought, oh god, do you know what? You're absolutely right. They basically said, I'm going to buy these. I'm going to buy one of all of these. You know, kind of these little Burns and Mini things as my kids' first synths. Yeah, and I'm going to give them to my kids as their first synths. Yeah. And you know, when you look at them like that, you think, "Christ, that's uh, that's a fantastic idea." Yeah, that's a, you know, that is a really good if, a, a, a way of getting, you know, kind of kids into into this world. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I yeah, mean, yeah. and I've said I've I've said this so many times in so many places. When I was younger, if I'd seen these when I was younger, and I when you know my mom and dad had no money and yeah. I was craving over one of these, I would absolutely be wetting myself yeah. for one of these, you know. Yeah. And um, and it's just it's just not it's not for me. It's not it's not for me. But I can absolutely understand why. Yeah. If you look at it at that level, I don't want to say it's a toy because I'm sure the sounds coming out of it will not be toy like at all. But as a as an introduction to 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 kids into synthesis. I think any of these, any of this range will be, um, will be great. You know? Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Agreed. I mean, I bought, I bought, I bought my daughter a, um, a, a reface. Everyone knows what my views on the, the Yamaha <laughs> refaces are. They're really not my favorites, but I bought her a CS reface just because it was to try and get her into, um, you know, kind of in, into synths. So I yeah. bought her a reface for Christmas. Of course, she just looked at it, made some helicopter sounds, and said it was shit, and never played it. I mean, didn't say she was shit; she was, she was nine at the time. <laughs> but, um, but never, you know, nine-year-old version of it. Of the, yeah, it's rubbish, and it's just <laughs> yeah. sat in her bedroom and never gets played. But it was, it was trying to introduce her. And I'll be honest with you, mm. yeah, maybe this would have been the only time if this these kind of things had been around. Maybe you know something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I tried to get James into the MS Twenty. And, okay. Uh, didn't last that long, but it was fun, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're this generation stylophone. That's what they are. I agree. Yeah, exactly. With that. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what they are, and that's how you look at it. It's just, it's just that without Rolf Harris. That's all it is. Yeah. You know? Thankfully. Yeah. 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 <laughs> micro micro <laughs> was the same in that way. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you can lay your finger on it and make a noise. That's, my that's, my yeah, first brilliant. synth was the Muson. I don't know if you've ever seen that. What? A Muson. It was a little orange plastic thing about this big, and it had coloured pegs that you stuck in across the top. Called Muson Synthesizer. Google it. It, it. it was a toy. It was like from the equivalent of B&M or something at the time. Like, <laughs> and my mum got me this synth, and I was like, wow. They're putting on, and all it did really, it did one sound, but you could um, you could alter the sequence of notes with these coloured pegs by putting them in a different order. Oh. Loved it. Now that probably cost nearly as much as one of these small yeah, things. Yeah, probably. So imagine what what, yeah. what fun I could well, have had is, with one of them. This is the thing. I mean, you remember? I mean, I remember having the VL tone in nineteen eighty yeah. or eighty one or whatever it was, and mm. I remember that cost. Thirty-two pounds. Yeah. So, yeah. work out how much was thirty-two pounds in nineteen eighty. I think yeah. you're going to be talking basically about the same kind of money. Yeah, yeah. you got done. Yeah. I got mine for twenty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> Argos. <laughs> yeah, bootleg music, Epson. <laughs> but do you know when? I, I take, yeah. can I take, can the only funny part about this was I actually got bought. You remember the Pong machine? Yes. Yeah. The Pong one. I got bought one of those, and uh, I didn't really like it that much. And so basically, the re re reason I remember the price was I could take it back and I could swap it for something. And I swapped my Pong machine for a VL tone. And the so rest is history. Was, and yeah. the rest is history. That was I a good move. It, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, 
You say that. <laughs> <laughs> the world would have been saved from my I, crap. <laughs> I think it's worked. I think it's worked. Yeah, but I could be Pung champion by now. Who knows? Well, yes. <laughs> Indeed. So there you go. That's that's this, the Roland C... Uh, Roland, sorry. Behringer CS Mini. God, that's a bit of a faux pas, isn't it? Uh, Behringer CS Mini. Now, they have um, actually... This is what I was kind of leading up to. They've... they've um, had two different people independent of Behringer. They've given them one, uh, one each of uh, what is it? The the Pro VS uh, Mini and the JT. I said so it is JT. They seem to have renamed it from the JP yeah. Four Thousand. So these are a, a brief demonstrations. Um, so let's just have a look at the the Pro VS Mini first. Hi everyone, I'm Claymus Venners. Behringer has recently sent me their newly announced Pro VS Mini, so let's check out how great this thing sounds. Right, there you go. That's enough of that one. Um, Sam? 1986. I know. It's, we're stuck in the 80s, but that's not a bad thing in my book. Um, yeah, it yeah. sounded okay. I mean, obviously, it's multi-tracked, and the drums were something else. But sounded good. It did sound okay. My only concern with that demonstration was that there was no demonstration of the use of the joystick. Now, I know that, obviously, this is early prototype type thing. Maybe it's not working. But surely, with a Profit VS... One thing that you should be kind of showing off is how it, you know, how the joystick works and how that affects the sound. The the, the patches as they were, they sounded okay. Anybody else thoughts on that one? I, well, I, I think that um, your you you should use your connections uh, at sound on sound and get him in for a studio SOS because the acoustics in his studio were awful. Jesus, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. What's going on there? I have no idea. It was yeah. But anyway. The scent sounded great, though. Uh, I yes. thought it sounded really good. And but his room needs treatment. His, his room <laughs> is awful. It's really bad. It's like this before I put anything in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so there you it's, go. It's, um, it's good. It's not again. It's not for me. It, it, it's the small uh, form factor that I don't like. I, I think yeah. it. But it's not. That's intended. for the sound. It's not for me. You know. It, it, yeah. But it does sound good. It, yeah, it's got the it's got a pretty authentic sound to it, and yeah, I've yeah. Not, I've never spent too much time with the with the Profit VS, so I really couldn't say if it's close. Um, Richard, you're it's it's sort of evocative. The Profit VS was sort of the forerunner of the Korg Wave Station. Yes, um, and it's got sort of that they they made sure to use some clangorous sounds. To mm -hmm. let you know that the vector synth was in effect, as, part of, <laughs> as apart from just the you know super saw type of behavior and the other stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, based on all the sounds we heard were fine. Yeah. I don't know how many other sounds it makes that are any good, but but <laughs> uh, it you know it looks like a cool product again yeah. for those people like you know right next you know in Ty's toy chest, yeah. as we shall hereafter know it. <laughs> um, right, right next to that other thing that just went by, you could have one of these, sure. Yeah, yeah. And it'll make a, a few different sounds, and it'll yeah. add up, you know, through a tiny little Behringer mixer to something that sounds like a record to the kid, and that's a beautiful yeah. thing. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ty, Kent, any further additions? Well, well the original BS had um, a power supply that was susceptible to overheating, so I suppose they've cured that problem. <laughs> at least um, but it, again it's this form factor thing it comes back to I don't want to when I'm manipulating a synthesizer it look like I'm sexually interfering with a mouse it's, it's just very tiny <laughs> everything about it it's like you're playing with a mouse dick it really, I'm bad, you know, not for me sorry move on oh dear is it Ty. wrong to turn around and go yeah I quite like the idea of just sexually interfering with a mouse what's wrong with that but that's you, you know, it's, it's, it's taste isn't it different tastes can I just say I've just had a face a bit around the wall going what did you just say wait I'm not bringing my hamster next weekend now no uh, it's I, okay the only thing I will say is um, I know there was talk the other day about whether it's paraphonic or polyphonic uh if you listen to the bell sounds on this, it does sound, it sounds polyphonic. So they've either, mm. they've either done multi-tracking per note, which would be a really sneaky, cheeky thing to do, but who knows. Um, but there is overhang on the bell, so I'm taking it that. It, they wouldn't be overhang if yeah. it was paraphonic. Uh, and the thing about it being four note poly, I get, obviously, because comparing it to the original, but at the same time, you know, I've got an, a, poly, a polyvolver that's four note poly, a lot of the boutiques, I mean, everyone complained about it at the time, but they were only four note poly. Mm. It's it's not the end of the world. But, you know, let, I mean, do bear in mind, it's only one voice less than a Profit 5. So it's not like it's the end yeah. of the world. It's not a, it's not like the original, but four note is, is, is a, God, I can't believe I'm saying something positive about Behringer. I really, <laughs> it's my birthday. I'm in a good mood. I can just see the tagline on there that, yeah, yeah. As, as, as approved yeah. by Ty Unwin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As approved, my ass. Um, <laughs> but it's. I just. I don't think the polyphony is an issue. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think. You know. Again, I know what Kent means. It, th those controls are incredibly small. But again, as I said, as we all said, the Volkers are out there, and the Volkers are no are no better in terms of a form factor. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, well, I don't like them either. Yeah, I know, yeah. but that, I'm the same kind of thing. But I just, it's, I'm trying to not just sit here and and yeah. do what you expect me to do with, with the B word. Perform, monkey! Come on, perform! Exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, I thought it's changing for you. Actually, do you know, know what? I really love these products. I think they're fantastic. There you go. Uh, there there you go. No, That's going to haunt you. Um, <laughs> actually, no, it's not. They're shit. They're shit. Okay, on that bombshell. You're going. <laughs> My final yeah. words were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to. I'm going to disappear and uh, and uh, start my weekend. Well, so thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that Rich has jumped in and jumped in my grave. So that's yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah. It's almost it's, like we planned it. What did I do with that shovel? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anyone else I'd rather do it. So uh, well, one of my favourite I mean, people in the world. So. I'll miss you. Oh, I miss you too, Rich. Have okay. a fantastic birthday around. weekend. I will do my best to. And meanwhile, have a great show and I'll watch and catch up. And everyone else uh, in the chat, have a great weekend and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Ty. Bye all. Yeah, see take you later. Take bye bye. Bye. Love self. The wonderful Ty Unwin there. Let's give him a round of applause in the chair. There we go. Um, there we go. Right. So um, there was one other thing uh, from Behringer that I wanted to play. Now this one, I, I want you to watch this uh, this one carefully and see if you can see what I saw. Um, this is a demonstration by a gentleman that calls himself the Synth King. I won't go there. Um, this is a dem... Sorry, this is a demonstration of the <laughs> JT4000. Hi, I'm Bernd, the Synth King. Behringer asked me to make a demo of the JT4000 microsynthesizer. So let's check out the sound.
So we seem to have jumped from the 80s to the 90s there. Um, did anybody else spot anything about what was going on in that video that seemed a little bit suspicious? Or was it Playing just Playing chords on a mini moog. I don't know. That, that one finger technique was really suspect to me. <laughs> Here's the thing that I saw. Go, go back and watch this. It's on Behringer's um, channel. Um, every patch that was used, and there were different patches being used, but every patch that was being used was the same patch it was called fat saw so even if it sounded different it, on the system on the instrument it was the same patch so i'm a little suspicious of because i went back to the vs1 i thought oh maybe they've done the same there maybe it's such a prototype but no this is just this one the patch name is the same for all of them and i just thought that's that's just a little bit suspicious yeah, maybe, maybe this other, isn't what we're hearing. Maybe the other patch doesn't sound as good. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it just it kind of just made me think. Well, is are we actually hearing what we're being told that we're hearing? It just yeah, it's, it's probably just suspicious. an editing thing. Just yeah. an editing thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it might be a case that the person who edited it didn't really have a clue and just kept putting the same shot back in or something. Yeah, or just take the could same, be, yeah, could the be. Same, yeah. Could, yeah, All right, okay. I'm a suspicious time. Aloysius, um, <laughs> uh -huh. but you know. I mean, that one's smaller than the Prophet, isn't it, in physical size? It didn't look much bigger than a, like a down. passport. Yeah, well, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was, unless he's got really big hands. Um, but, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was an odd one. I am but, the synth snob, and this is the new Hammond. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Or the Bammond, yeah. Exactly. Um, but there you go. So... Uh, the synth king uh, demonstrating there the JT four thousand. Um, I'm wondering because they they did initially bill it as the JP four thousand, and I wonder if um, someone's lawyers just got on the phone and said, "Oi, you're getting a bit too close again. Back off." Yeah, well, it, it said JP on the machine, but JT in the intro didn't. Yeah, it? Yeah, and in everything else they've they've done since yeah. then, it says JT. So JP's mm. a bit too. It's, it's a bit close, too isn't close, it? isn't it? Really? Well, let's say the people at Behringer know what it is they're actually working on. <laughs> it must yeah. get confusing yeah. but you know it's another thing and i think we've we've done this one to death now you know it is they're interesting products when they eventually appear and, and I, I have been thinking we should have a rule that we don't feature any of these until they're actually available um, yeah. but there's so many things that they have listed that they're going to make and they still haven't made it robs us of the opportunity to take the piss out of them well yeah true and there is a rich history in this business of people advertising products long before they appear. Very Just true. look at Mo Moog used to do that a lot. Back yeah, in the yeah, 70s, true. Actually. Yeah. No less an esteemed name than Moog has done mm. that. So yeah. if you don't cover it, someone else will. Exactly. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is very yeah. true. Yeah. Very yes. true. Yeah. Okay, so some interesting stuff from Behringer, at least this week, because we actually got to see and hear the things outside of a design drawing on, on a Facebook post. Uh, thanks to Wagyu for your donation. Uh, that was great to see that flash by on the screen. Um, so uh, I think that's all the Behringer stuff done. We've done the, the Phantom stuff. Can I just remind you that um, at the beginning of the show, we had a look at the Cherry Audio Dream Synth, um, and the, we pretty much universally liked it there was a few little things that we'd like maybe to improve and hopefully we'll we can feed that back to the guys there but if you want to win yourself a copy of dream synth we have one right here to give you this very day uh well kind of i mean a, there's a process behind it but yes we, we've got one um and if you want to win it all you've got to do is in the youtube chat um just very briefly describe what your dream synth would be and start the comment so that it helps us pick it out start the comment with the word dream synth preferably in, in, in as big a capital letters as you can muster and tell us 
what your dream synth would be and it can be a serious kind of request it can be a jovial one um it can be a tongue-in-cheek thing whatever just tell us what your your dream synth would be and then at the end of the show we will go through and we might ask uh, mr hilton to pick his favorite um comment and uh, that person will win a copy of dream synth talking of which richard we you weren't on when we were talking about dream synth have you had a chance to play around with it or have you had any experience of that no, I was, no, okay. I was uh, not in attendance. I was on the phone with my son, who's traversing the country for oh, wow. an audio gig in L.A. next week. Nice. So Very nice. He's driving the, the studio across the country. He's in Arizona now. Cool. Which one is this? Corey. Your son? Corey. 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 Yeah. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Well, we won't ask you about the, the dreams in, um, but uh, take it from us. We like it. It's good. <laughs> I think it is good, yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely good, definitely good. Right, okay, so we, we've not got a huge amount of time. We've got about half an hour or so left, um, and there wasn't much uh, <laughs> to talk about news-wise, but this was one other thing. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to mark a couple of other comments and entries into the competition. Um, just do that, and there's that, and there's that. Right, um, so... It's Vemia auction time again, everyone. Hey, um, the Sphere Music auctions <laughs> yeah, have, um, have has been announced, and it will be taking place soon. Um, let's find out exactly when by just bringing up the page on the screen. Hopefully, it hasn't logged me out. Um, so this will the auction will happen the week commencing April second of this year although it does say 2021 in the top left hand corner i'll have to email peter about that um, but it is going to take place in a couple of weeks time and items are being added as we speak some of the featured items uh on uh this page here for example we've got a uh, synergy 2 plus with a k pro 2 uh for 4950 <laughs> and there's this little beauty the um ra moog Tran trumansberg sorry modular as a mere Snip mm. of uh, uh, 44,950. There's uh, an early Cynthia AKS. Does that have if, a number on it, the uh, Moog? It does, yes. Let me um, let me just see if I can jump to that. There we go. So, I just um, wondered the one that was a Cornell that was number three. Um, there were numbers on them. I was looking through. The, here we go. Let's see if I can bring this up. So, there are the numbers on the back. I don't know if you can see those there. Um, so the 901 is a serial number 1085 and there's 1272 I made see. on March 28th, 1969. Trumansburg, oh. New York. That's the real deal. Yeah, because mm. um, you were saying when we had you on the show the other day that um, they, that wasn't too far from you, was it? Or, or you, you worked around there or something? I went to college, in Ithaca, I went to college in Ithaca, New York at Ithaca College School of Music and Trumansburg is right up the road, uh, famous yeah. bar we all played there mm. called the Rungovian Embassy. Mm -hmm. And on the way and past this magnificent waterfall called Teganic Falls was the mailbox of Robert Monk. And he had at one time a shop in Trumansburg at which he was doing productions on the, on the, the one main street. I mean, it's mm. literally like one main street, Trumansburg. Um, so it's really cool that it's being called Trumansburg, actually. Yeah. For anybody who's been there, it'll be. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice place, nice part of the world. You'd love it. Yeah, uh, one day I, th I hope to, to visit New York. Right. So what else is there in the auction? Um, there was a few things that I've added to my list. Um, but the price of that will definitely go up. <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, so the starting price is 44950 Yeah. Because yeah. um, bog standard 55s have been fetching that in the right. last 12 months. So, yeah, yeah, double that. Nice thing. So at the moment, there's about 60-odd items. that you know, Peter's adding these daily as he does. Um, so just going through the list, I'm not entirely sure um, how well you can see that on the screen because um, the one thing I really don't like about these this site is it's, it's kind of still very much a 1990s experience. However, um, there is one of these, the old DX1, and this one has got a much more realistic starting price of 11950 That's definitely more what the um the market is you know yeah some of these ones that have been going for like 75 or being asked for seventy five thousand is just yeah. ridiculous um but this is an american version so if you do buy this they do supply you with a step down um but just be be wary of that if you're bidding um what else have we got there's elisa's quadriverb there's a bootler red panel um 
in there. Let's see what else. Anything that's really interesting. And in Sonic EPS with, with the HXC, that's got a starting price of £380. Mm. Um, You've got an so, ASR 10 right down there, if anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so there's a Korg Mr. Multi. Look at that nice little Korg pedal from way back when. Um, mm. uh, we've, uh, so we, we mentioned the, the Synthy. Uh, AKS, um, the thirty-first model made, apparently. Wow, uh, that that's got a starting price of nineteen thousand nine hundred, but it no, it looks no. immaculate. It really 19, does. Nineteen thousand dollars. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's about eight k too high. Really? Yeah, right, right out the bat. Mm. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if it's got a famous owner because that can sometimes. Um... Well, it starts off about how rare it is, doesn't it? Yeah, how many single how, how owners Cynthia AKS is, uh, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say. It's been serviced by Robin Wood at EMS. Well, I can think of about 120. <laughs> so, no, they're not that rare. He claims to be the original owner. owner. Right, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, lot of them, though. Mm. Oh, there you go, 19,900 for one of those. Um, um. What, what else have we got in here? I did have some What's on the next page. Because there's always some really you know, interesting things that pop onto this. Is it still got uh, that Technic stuff on it? Uh, I don't think so. There's a SPX90 in there, which I'm I'm kind of keeping in mind because I wouldn't mind one of those. Mm. There's even some Behringer gear on there. Um, there's a Sequential Circuits 1005 poly sequencer. Got one in the that garage. <laughs> <laughs> this should, yeah, this is, this should be. I've oh, got one of those. Yeah, got one of those. Yeah, 290 quid. Yeah. There um, you go. So 290 this is a, a US version as well um, and there's an Elka I saw Elka Elka Rhapsody 610 uh, in there um, looks, looks I saw an a, a, a Eminent 310 for sale for not very much money in the UK just recently hmm. um, and then on the final page there's a few there's a, a wave station there there's a Rex 50 uh, there's Oh, there's a D5. There's some Roland samplers in there as well. There's an RSP550 stereo signal processor. Um, yeah. Oh, there's an Insonic DP4, which I know a lot of people are quite mm -hmm. fond of. Yeah. That's got a starting price of £200. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but some interesting interesting stuff in there. Um, a Hona bass synth. A rare Hona bass oh. synth. You got one of those, Ken? Yeah, I got one in the kitchen. <laughs> Honest That's, to God, I seriously, have you got kitchen. one in the kitchen? I have one in the kitchen. It belongs to Alex Ball. Oh, mm, there you go. Yeah, honest to God, I got one of them. Mm. Well, there you go. Well, maybe um, that is it, and he's selling it. He hasn't told oh, it me. Could yet. be. It could be. <laughs> There's even a system seven hundred. There's a system seven hundred up there as well. Um, in on, excellent shape, look. apparently. How much? How much do we think this is going to be? Go on, let's, let's have a guess. It's going to be um, that will. Well, wait a minute. It's you got a main cab, Let me and just what bring appears the... to be half a wing. Yeah, that's something oh, going it's got on no there. Case at all. Oh, they've taken it out of the case, and they've mm. removed. Ooh, mm. that, um, that I'm not going to go through the the blurb that, there, but yeah, you no, know, it doesn't tell me enough to be honest. Thirty-two thousand. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the main cab's worth that. Yeah. Yeah, the main cab's worth that. Yeah. Mm. But there you go. I mean, that's the um, the Vemia auction, which say kicks off uh, April second, and things are being added all the time. So bookmark the page and uh, keep an eye. You do get some bargains uh, every now and again in that. I've I've never bought uh, sorry bought um, gear. I've only ever bought like accessories, things like you know sound libraries and discs and manuals and things. Um, so there's always there's something for everyone in there, and it's it's a very fair process. And every time you buy something, Peter Peter must have had thousands of these uh, CDs printed. He had the little label a while back, and he obviously hasn't can't sell them anymore. So he uses the CDs as packaging. <laughs> and so you buy your thing. I, I've I've got piles of these discs that everything I've ever bought comes with at least two or three of these CDs. So you get some free music in there as well. But uh, yeah, um, the, the Vemia auction is now um, being pro, um, 
what's, what's the word processed uploaded um and then the sales will start on april uh second finishing on saturday april 9th and uh, that's when the the biddings uh, will close and they close in the order that peter's you know put them on so the the first thing opens and then it goes through and then it closes um you know in in sequence shall we say anything that wasn't sold by saturday is then put up on for second chance sunday the following you know the following day so uh, mm. on april 10th so there's um there's plenty of stuff to to have a look around and i'm sure there's something for everyone in there but that's the uh the Vemir auction um uh, run by the wonderful peter forrest who of course is the author of the um the analog i can't remember the full name of the books now but those two analog synthesizer encyclopedia yeah. books um a to z of. the a to z of analog synthesis yes that's yeah. it. um which i believe he's had reprinted i've got a couple of copies downstairs uh, it's a very interesting book yeah he didn't correct some of the stories yeah may, maybe maybe so. slightly inaccurate in places but it's it's, yeah. it's nice it's a nice did, little thing to did snuggle up i said oh, well, that didn't happen or actually <laughs> this did happen and but he's gone nah sort it leave it yeah folklore now um so don't forget if you want to uh win a copy of dream synth this is your last chance because we're, we're just coming into the last half hour of the show um if you want to win a free copy of Cherry Audio's Dream Synth, uh, then all you've got to do is, along with about 36 other people at the moment, is tell us what is your Dream Synth and tell us, you know, something that's going to grab our attention that will make us maybe chuckle a little bit. Or, you know, there's no, you know, no hard and fast rules, but um, tell us what your Dream Synth will be. But do so by replying in the chat room and starting your message with the word Dream Synth. Tell us what it is. You've only got about 200-odd characters, so you can't go into too much detail. And, um, yeah, let us know. We will pick one of those. We'll get um, Richard maybe to, to do that. And <laughs> he's entered the competition himself, but he's automatically... Dis two different ideas already. Yeah, so. You're disqualified, but we'll, we'll throw it in the in I'd have the to patch. recuse myself. Yeah, but, um, yeah, go for it and let us know... Uh, what your dream synth might be make sure you put the word dream synth at the very beginning so that it helps uh, those of us with poor vision to pick it out and stick it in the pot with everything else and we'll make sure that um, one of you will go away today with a um uh, one of these things can't play with my left hand very well but there you go so you'll get one of those what that sounded like a sonar yeah it's going off in the background Very nice. Um, right, so we've got about 20 minutes uh, before the end of the show, and there, there has been so little news. So why don't we ask our surprise guest, Mr. <laughs> Hilton, um, you're going out on tour um, with the one and only, um, obviously you're with Chic, but you're supporting Duran Duran. Yes, we are. In That's the North American leg of the tour, right? Well, the one that just come out, to be advertised is the North American leg of the tour, which will occur in mid August into September, I believe. And it's, I think they're playing 12 shows and we're playing eight of those 12 shows. Okay. For whatever reasons. Are, I don't know. Awesome. But um, we're also playing with them in Scandinavia, like soon, like, uh, well, oh. soon. It's, uh, top of June, I believe it is. Uh, mm -hmm. There's at least one and maybe more than one shows with them in Scandinavia. We've played, we toured with them, throughout America and Canada in 2016. And mm -hmm. I've known those guys personally, all of them since 2002 and Simon since 96. So mm -hmm. um, we all go back in good ways and uh, good yeah. friends and I really look forward. It's great, great show yeah. for the audience. The funny thing is when you, when you play with Duran Duran, the first three rows are the same 50 women in every city. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, they're um, they're all trying to look like they did when John Taylor's picture was on their bedroom wall. <laughs> bless them, yes. Yeah, you... yeah, absolutely. God yeah, bless yeah. them, and I love seeing them. And they they become friends now. I mean, yeah, you, know, you get to know them because they you see their faces all the time, and yeah, then they then they you know Facebook friend you, and the next thing you know, you're finding out about their families, but. Um, it's, it's good. It's a really good thing. And nice camaraderie between bands. And we just, you know, we love those guys. And they seem to 
allow us back in the room. So that, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. They like this too. And yeah. uh, it's it's I'm looking forward to it. But I mean, even so, I'm going to be. I'm leaving in six days, and I'm probably going to be gone for ten days, and then I'm going to be doing down and backs for the next two months. And when I leave at the end of May. Mm -hmm. to go on the road over on your side of the ocean. I mm -hmm. won't come home until sometime in August in wow. time for the Duran Duran tour. <laughs> so, I'm serious. It's nonstop gigging this year, and I'm going to be all over the UK, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, um, mainland Europe, a ton of countries in awesome. mainland Europe. We're, we're touring like crazy this year, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, because it's... And I might, know if I can get my hands on one, end up playing one of those Roland Phantom 08s. There you go. If, if it does what I'm hoping it does. And uh, <laughs> we'll yeah. see. But no, isn't it great now to um, to actually kind of be able to go back out on the road and perform in front of full auditoriums? Yeah. Well, you know, it's as great as ever and then some because yeah. we've all felt uh, sort of deprived of human interaction and the feelings that get exchanged between mm -hmm. the band and the audience during the shows are, are life affirming moments that I could barely even describe with words. It's, it yeah. means so much to me. And plus we have friends all over cause we've been all over. And so you get, now we're going to get to see our friends again. And, yeah. uh, like you and you guys, hopefully we'll get to hopefully, see. Yeah. I'll be, yeah. uh, Let's see. I'll be in England like really soon. I'm going to be in England on the 27th of this month. Wow. Oh, cool. From the looks of it. And I'm going to be there until the 3rd of next month. And there's really only a couple of things that we're doing during that whole time. So I'm mm. sort of going to be around. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's have a jam. <laughs> I'm, up, I'm up for practically anything. Um, you bring I'll the cook kid. you a burger. That doesn't, that doesn't infringe on my ability to do my job or sap my energy. You know. Like, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll stop Kent from doing a barbecue. Yeah, I'll cook you a burger, uh, mate. Yeah, you bring your own you, burgers, barbecue. Yeah, bring your own. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. dear, I did. Oh yes, right. No, I'll um, cook. If we go to Kent's house, I'll cook. <laughs> oh no, I'd like that. If I can get, if I can get into the kitchen. Um, now you yeah. would like the Piona's burgers, I must admit. Good. Handmade ground beef. Is that beef a euphemism? No, no, no it's not. It can be if you want. Yeah, and, she uh, makes a beautiful I'd love, burger. I'd love that. I'd love to see you guys, and uh, we'll see what comes. You know, and yeah, anyone definitely. who's listening in the chat room, hit me up. We'll see what comes. If it's possible, we'll do. If you cool. know, have a dinner, you, have a beer. You're talking about in this part of the world. You're playing Hyde Park, aren't you? Yeah, we're playing Hyde Park in uh, with Duran Duran in July. Yeah. As it nice. Happens. Wow. Um, that'll be one that I'll sit and watch on the TV. That one. There's going to be a whole. There's a whole slew of them. We've become like the favorite. We've become the favorite at the race courses in England. So we're playing yes. a bunch of race courses. Yeah, the jockey um, clubs. Yeah. Uh, mm. We, you know, we play in London. We play giant <laughs> venues these days. Yeah. Which is an amazing thing when you think about it. The fact that we're dispensing what is essentially a, le a legacy band catalog. Mm -hmm into a market that looks like it's designed around, you know, modern pop successful artists. It's yeah. Yeah. But good common. music is good music. Exactly. Well, I, I appreciate timeless. that, but we were playing good music and not getting these gigs. You know what I mean? Mm, amazing yeah. thing. You know, we were getting good gigs and, you know, certainly we weren't playing, you know, horrible dumps or anything like that. But I mean, the whole thing has leveled up in the last, I don't know, eight or 10 years, a whole mm. notch. Yeah. It makes it really unusual because of the nature of the presentation. It's not new, current artists, breaking artists. And we're getting on bills with great bands like, you know, yeah. Duran Duran and Cher. And, and when we play, we're playing a show in Italy with the Foo Fighters. Wow. Um, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, I believe, a football stadium, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. So, uh, no, it's San Siro. It'd be that'd cool. Be, yeah, San Siro, yeah. Yeah, because you you were in my neck of the woods a few years ago when you did the um, the new market race course because uh, that's we, part of the, the jockey club circuit. You, are we you doing know. that? We might be doing that one this year. I know we're doing oh, right. eight three in in Liverpool area. All mm -hmm. oh, right. And there's yeah. another one. Um, there's at least two or three of the race courses. I don't remember yeah. Sandown or the one you just said. New market, yeah. Uh, new market. We, you know, we've played a bunch of them, and it's fun. You know, it's fun to win over audiences that aren't necessarily there to see you. I know that sounds odd because, you know, most people really want to be the headliner and I get it. I sort of do too. But 
the opportunity, like you, you imagine in a race course that some per- sizable percentage of those people didn't come to see us. We're a, mm. we're a value added to their day of watching the horses and having a day, you know, they've got these nice food courts and all this stuff for families. And it's yeah. really a whole family occurrence over there in a way that it's not here at all. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just really fun to get to win over those audiences because he's got such great songs and they just sort of never, as long as we deliver them well, yeah. they never fail. It, it's yeah. just happy music and people need it worse than ever now. Yes. And uh, the privilege aspect of getting to participate in other people's happiness is never lost on me, not even for a second. Mm. And so I, I'm really kind of chuffed as you guys say about <laughs> yeah it's, it's this this whole race course thing uh, has kind of happened in the last few years where i think because a lot of them are owned by the jockey club which is you know the kind of the big horse racing organization over here and they just saw this as a revenue opportunity and they started booking bands and it they started doing kind of legacy acts and so i'm not saying that in, you know that the legacy acts aren't as good as others but they started to attract more current acts and so certainly you know in this neck of the woods where where i am we don't get much over here we get we have small uh venues that can maybe do a couple of thousand people so you get a lot of the indie bands and the breaking bands and um some of the slightly older ones as well but you know we, when you want a big name act there's not many places here and so to have that in one of the um the race course uh, grand because they've got plenty of room there to fit all these people in and you make a day of it. You go along. And I went along um, a few years ago for my birthday um, and saw Tears for Fears playing. And you spent the the day having a you know, flutter on the GGs and, and maybe you went, won a few pounds, maybe you lost a few pounds. And there was massive food court there. And then at about 7 o'clock, everybody filtered round to the uh, the other side of the, the the grandstand and there's the band and you, you know, watch those for 90 minutes or so and everybody goes away happy it's uh, it's a really good event it's a really well, good event and quite often they leave people in the stands that are yes. bordering the yeah. stage so it's got this sort of old time i don't know if you guys remember 60s rock shows where like mm. shindig and in america it was like yeah, shindig yeah. and hullabaloo but i'm sure you had the equivalent the was i don't know what the whistle test looked like but it's like you're sort of surrounded by the audience in a yeah. cool mm. kind of safe way and it's yeah and it's, so they get a unique look at what what it is we're doing because they're in that perspective rather than mm. out front looking up at the stage yeah and there are plenty of people out there too oh yeah so it's got this whole sort of being wrapped in a cocoon of love part that is really a wonderful mm. feeling yeah. in life. and like you said very family oriented because you know yeah. i took my kids and there was loads of other young people and and you know I, I was, you know, here you go, kids. This is who I grew up listening to, and and they really enjoyed it. Surprisingly, so yeah. Well, the other surprising aspect of the demographics of Chic, particularly in the UK and the surrounding countries, is that we will play festivals where the fence is lined with mm. inebriated young people who are singing <laughs> the words to songs they've got no business knowing, yeah. <laughs> and it's just amazing to watch and see them moving their you know, see them singing along to songs that at least over here were not big hits, but um, have tremendous resonance in thank yeah. God, in countries over where you guys live. And uh, it's a great, it's an amazing thing. It's a really amazing thing to get to participate in other people's happiness. Yeah, it's timeless stuff. Definitely timeless stuff. Right, let's, shall we, shall we draw a winner for our competition? Yes. Yeah, oh, let's sure. do that. Right, we've got plenty of entries. So entries are now closed nothing don't don't bother trying to do it now because you won't get in right. so um it's all so let me go through first of all can i also just say uh, thank you to ollie over there in uh, the republic of ireland thank you very much for your donation sir i hope you are well i saw a picture of you and your lovely lady on uh, twitter or instagram the other day looking rather lovely a pair of you by the beach and um, thank you uh, for your donation much a uh, much appreciated um and there it is again second time right uh let's go through some of these i'm going to throw these up on the screen um so just try and remember ones that you you liked uh or maybe just the name of the person uh we'll go through these one by one um so what do we we have uh champ trucks dream synth one that is capable of providing a happy ending very good um 
Keith, uh, so no, this is Get So Many Music. Mine would be a cherry with great audio wrapped in the Pro Synth Network t shirt signed by Ben Simpson. Oh, he's going for that one, isn't he? He's, he's really, got my phone. That's got you. Yeah, quite. Um, Ripping in honey. Injury, yes. Andrew Brooks. Oh, here we go. Um, my dream synth is the Mark One DX7 in the flight case with cartridges buried Ooh. under Kent's shed. There you go. That's his entry. That's yeah. That's a good one. Um, Jason Crouch says Dave Smith cloning Uli 16 voice vaporware, but doing as it should have been. <sighs> touche, sir. <laughs> touche. Um, Angie Johansson, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Dream synth for me would be the whole Tonto system that actually works properly in a three U or smaller rack unit. <laughs> I don't think that's a necessarily dream synth. That's in posse synth. <laughs> wow, yeah. Well, I'd love to see that thing. Um, right, dream synth. Cherry audio dream synth or the Oberheim 8 voice, but its architecture is the Buchler 200 series modules instead with a Sam and MS-20 filters per voice into LPG. Mm-hmm. Whatever that is. That's, well, that's a great choice of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you could bolt all that together and make it work, that would be pretty cool. Um, Mike Malloy. Ah, Dream said the Pro Synth Network T-shirt that you can play. There you go with the keyboard across, and you can play. There's an idea for your man. Yeah, or you know, with pressure sensitives. Yeah, yeah. Um, Electronic aftertouch. Yeah, (laughs) Plays FM says one that has MPE presets, and then this one happens to have them. So it's a dream come true. It's very true. Uh, Dream Synth does have MPE uh, presets built in. Um, Rosie, Audible Cherry Popper, (laughs) short and sweet. They aren't. They are, aren't yeah. they? Normally, yeah, quite. Um, and I miss two thousand with more voices and maybe some more filter options and less display digging. Says Parflake. Uh, Sasquatch says a marriage of a Hydrosynth Deluxe and a Kurtzweil. He had to get that in. Uh, Kurtzweil K twenty seven hundred with an anaglyph on the side. Mm. That's a bit lopsided, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Wow. I'm surprised nobody's actually just put Dream Synth anaglyph. I think that would have won. I did song. that. I was Somebody the first. Did, did you? That, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Far enough. Oh, we'll, well, we'll find that. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, we've just done that one. Sorry. Um, Peter James Stephen, Dream Synth. Mine would be a brand new Chroma Polaris that wouldn't keep breaking its bloody membrane switches. <laughs> yeah. Very true, yes. Yeah. Uh, Dieter says, Dream Synth cured my nightmare. Oh, is that is that a competition entry? I don't think that is, actually. But anyway, I'm glad it did. Um, Dieter, Volker, um, Mando Strat says, Dream Synth sounds great, easy to program. Uh, Grace Griffin, the perfect synth for me is free. Uh, short and to the point and honest. Very true. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ben at Musings. Welcome, Ben. Um, I, oh, I had a flashback because Ben runs the whole Musings website with it, it archives uh, music uh, magazines from all around the world. And the one that's just gone up today is one of the copies of 1-2 testing that I still have to this very day with uh, Dave Stewart on the front playing one of these kind of short neck guitars. I don't know if there's a special name for it. Anyway, Ben's in the room. Well done, Ben. A uh, brand new shiny perfect Jupiter 8 with MIDI that doesn't cost a bazillion dollars. Wouldn't we all like one of those? Um, I sing the body electric, one that will burn for long enough to keep me warm throughout my dotage. Oh, that's a bit grim, isn't it? Um, <laughs> some guy called Richard Hilton uh, says anaglyph. <laughs> well, there you go. I think he's won it, don't you? Uh, <laughs> but he's Keith in Watford. He's the winner, so he must have. Yeah. Well, yes. No, we'll have to discount that one. Uh, Keith in Watford says a Moog Liberation. Yes, really. Um, JP Page 2 says uh, I'd love a Colossus who doesn't want the synth that fills your living room very Ooh. true um, Reckington a controller that will load VSTs and map to controls but that actually works that's yeah, yes. that's a very good point uh, Prometheus a synth recently advertised by Behringer that gets made and reaches music stores Ooh, slight dig but Got yes it. like that one um, one that provides a oh we've had that one <laughs> He really wants his happy ending. Uh, a synth the size of a contact lens that I can play by blinking. Ooh. I'm sure that probably happened, but not in our time. And keep you awake at night. Yeah. Um, Jim Glue says, a synth that outputs the music in my head. Ooh. That's a bit futuristic, yeah. That's a change from the voices. It's getting the music out. You're yeah. Problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want the voices in my head, but yeah, yeah. Should st- shove the yeah. synths in. I've only got the normal amount. Yeah, um, JX3D says my dream synth is a Behringer twenty nine dollar version of Cherry Audio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good, sir. Very good. Um, Give me a week. I think. Oh, how that? 
this is second entry. This is Andrew Brooks's second entry. Uh, Dream Synth played from my lovely KX88, which is currently on loan to Robbie P. You wish. Um, <laughs> Will Joseph says electric cowbells with polyphonic aftertouch. Uh, we've got a few more here. We're getting through them. Ian Cole uh, says a synth that plays itself when I tell it a chord sequence. Yeah, yeah voice activated synthesizer. Nobody thought it's of that. Just yet. another keyboard player, isn't it? Yeah, or you play this. Yeah, um, be flat. <laughs> Forty-nine keys, poly touch, knob per function, touch screen, multi timbral lightweight. Good. I'm sure. I'm sure seen. there's yeah. Hydro, <laughs> yeah, nice and to the point. Um, at O Z, uh, uh, sorry, A to Z is how I've learned to pronounce that ah, now. Okay. Um, ah. dream, yeah, you see, it took me a while as well. Yeah, uh, VCO yeah. synth with a DCO switch. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, that's uh, that's that, that's not here, darling. This this guy keeps entering. Uh, sorry, no, they're not that lady. Uh, this guy, <laughs> Pyre Modular. He's really trying. He really is trying. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but oh, probably okay. nobody's ever. Pro- I might be the only one here who's ever seen one. And played it. Yeah. You've seen one. You've probably fixed one. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I dropped one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have bode well. Lady Aptitude says a JX8P with a programmer. Yeah, that'd be a nice little combo for sure. Mm. Um, Jim Glues, this is his second entry, would capture the music in my dreams literally. Uh, uh, yeah, clarification. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, porn yeah, music. Yeah. 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 Got it, Jim. <laughs> An analog Fairlight says Chris Stack. Well, technically the, the first ones had analog filters. No, hang on, I'm still thinking about that one. What's that? Mm. An analog Fairlight. He likes it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay. <laughs> um, Frank Ellis Studio in the box <laughs> says uh, Andy Johansson um, Traitor to the Living says one that doesn't annoy my family yeah that's a good one like every synth in my house annoys my family <laughs> what does that one do that the other ones don't <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Ian J. Cole's another one here uh, a Casio VL tone <laughs> with a Fatah keyboard yeah. um, that's it I'm low and the last one, bringing up the rear, uh, <laughs> bringing up the rear, uh, we have Mr. Wiggly, sparkly with a tasteful wooden end bits, a cup holder for coffee, and a side tray for biscuits, a whooshy swishy filter, and trouser flapping bass bin, lots of wiggly knobs, and a slot to keep your keys in. Ooh. That's a good one. A poem. So, there we go. Yeah. We've had like about forty odd entries there. Did any one of those tickle? Uh, let's let's go around the room first. Um, we'll end up with Richard. But first of all, Ben, um, any of those that stood out to you? I, I like the uh, the uh, one in the T-shirt that was signed by me. Oh, you I, would, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did like that. It, it played to me ego. So yeah, it's good. Uh, would give that it, be? That yeah. There you go. That was that was Brian. Uh, Brian Oliver gets so many music. Uh, any one of those stick out to you, Kent? The analog Fairlight did actually. You quite like the analog Fairlight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah did, I quite yeah. like the yeah. idea of that. We that was Chris like that. Stack. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to hand the honour to what our. About you, Rob. Me. Um, I, well, I, I must say I did like Mr. Wiggly's for his. Um, yeah, that was quite yeah. an elaborate one there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but mm. there was some, there were some really good ones in there. Uh, I like the Tonto one because I'm a huge fan of of Tonto and their expanding I, I quite headband. I like I like the Tonto one. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love to have a play with the Tonto or the Tonto. It must still be around somewhere. Is it in the museum? It's broken up now, isn't it? Is it? Oh no! Yeah, I thought it was broken up. Yeah. I, Surely yeah. Behringer's planning on making it in that new farm <laughs> oh, factor. Don't. <laughs> Comes don't. in a matchbox. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, Mr. Hilton, did any of those leap out at you and tickle your fancy at all? Was, was there any particular one that... Yeah, I, I think i got to go with Wiggly on this one. I think <gasps> I like Wiggly's design. There we go. The right. Dream Synth, sparkly with tasteful wooden end bits, a cup holder for coffee and a side tray for biscuits, a whooshy swishy filter and trouser flapping base base bin, lots of wiggly knobs, and a slot to keep your keys in. There you go. It has been chosen by Mr. Hilton. Um, Dominic, you have won yourself a copy of Dream Synth DS1. Congratulations, sir. I I can do this. We're only catching up to to Dom in the sound effects department here very, very slowly. And it just goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. Um, Thank you ever so much. Oh, hang on. What's what's going on here? Well, uh, oh, give it to someone else more deserving, please, says Mr. Wiggly. 
Um, he says, Ooh. pass it on to Tonto. Oh, well, that's very gracious okay. of you, sir. Um, so, uh, okay, let me just go and find you. Throw me right off my <laughs> thing there. Uh, right. who, 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 who? It was up here we get, somewhere. We get to do the applause again anyway. There we go. So, Angie Johansson. You have won wow. a copy of Dream Synth. <laughs> Out of the blue. <laughs> now, Angie, obviously still catching up there because in the he said, oh, my Tonto didn't win. Um, but yeah, you it did. did. It, it did. did. Um, so, yeah, unless you want to pass it on to someone, please don't do that because it only confused me. <laughs> um, so thank you. Um, thank you ever so much, Dominic. That was that was very gracious of you. Like the um, the person, do you remember when you used to go uh, to like a jumble sale at the school and you used to have the raffle and then somebody said, oh, I've already won something, give it to somebody else. And then you'd go through the whole process again. Um, mm. It's a bit like that. So um, Angie Johansson, I hope I have pronounced your, your name correctly. Um, all you need to do to get your hold of your copy is first of all um you need to sign up to uh the cherry audio uh website and um create an account if you haven't already got one once you've done that because you need to use your email address to sign up for that send us your email address and you can do that by either contacting us uh you can you know dm us on twitter um or if you want to you can just do it via email just send it to info at prosynthnetwork.com and um then we will pass that uh information on to dan goldstein at cherry audio who is waiting as we speak i think um to credit that to your account so you will have that uh, hopefully uh, if not by the end of today maybe at some point uh, early next week i guess i don't want to you know put down on the spot here and say when it's going to have but that's all you need to do give us the email address you use to sign up for your account um and then we will have that credited to your account so well done and thank you again to dominic for uh, that rather generous gesture um it was very, very generous that. Yeah, yeah absolutely um, and of course if you didn't win then thanks ever so much for um for entering into the spirit of things um and angie has um now accepted the the prize so that's good um and uh, if you didn't win i'm sorry but you can go out and buy uh, your own copy of dream synth from uh, cherryaudio.com and it's available for 39 dollars uh, currently reduced by 20 for the full price of 59 so there you go bargain yes indeed so that kind Absolutely. of brings us very nicely like kind of spot on nine o'clock how good is that um thank you to everyone thank you richard for coming along at, at such short notice impromptu uh, it was great to have you on and um certainly to get your your insight onto the uh, the new phantoms which was very interesting and of course it's a, always an honor and a pleasure to have you on board and chatting with you so thank Definitely. you very much for coming along what's your weekend got lined up for you very kind of you to have me first of all it's really Not grateful problem. for the opportunity because i was lit up on the topic and i wanted, <laughs> wanted to get in on it um my weekend well it, it it this is the last weekend i'm i'm home before so right. i don't have any specific plans except to be home and and kind of bask in the homey thing because as it starts next week, things are going to get more and more intense until yeah. the point where I'm just away, like for most of the year. So um, I'm wrapping up um, our, our fairly isolated lifestyle in style, and uh, <laughs> going to have going to have as much fun as I can. You know, enjoying home, enjoying being here with Honey, and uh, trying to get to see my guys or staying in touch nice. with the guys, and you know, just. Life's good, man. I'm I'm ever thankful, and blessed, and uh, couldn't be more more thankful. Cool, excellent stuff. Well, have a fantastic weekend and thank enjoy you your too. family. And, uh, and you guys, thank you, Ben. You uh, gigging this weekend? I am. I'm gigging tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember where it is. I think. Oh. I I think Here's it's in, one chance. To I plug think it's it. in Barnsley. I think uh, Barnsley. I'm sure. E EMX Gold will be able to tell me in the chat where we are, but I, I haven't got a clue. Uh, I'm also going to have a conversation with the guy from uh, Andy from Viper Graphics about getting some of these so we can oh, get yes. them available to everybody who is interested because I think mm -hmm. that's going to be a great thing, especially with the uh, synth shows coming up. 
Yeah. And I'm on Dom's show uh, on Sunday. Oh, of course. Yeah, yes. I was supposed mm. to be on last week, but it got uh, Dom got ill, so yes. we couldn't do it. So I'll, I'll be um, I'll be on his show. I'm looking forward to it. Sounds, and what time is that? Sounds good fun. I think it's seven o'clock, isn't it? Seven o'clock Sunday. Yeah. 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 On the Mister Wiggly YouTube oh, channel. We're in Berry. That's where we are. You're in Berry. 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 Berry Lanks. Wembley Arena. He says Wembley, Wembley Arena in Berry. One, yeah. one day. One day. <laughs> Um, brilliant, yeah. So if you want to catch up with more Ben, because uh, who who can't get enough of uh, Mr. Simpson, he is on Mr. Wiggly's show this uh, this yeah. Sunday at seven p.m. UK time. Please yeah. uh, remember, if you are uh, on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, they have been very impatient. They always go to their daylight savings times two weeks before the rest of us catch up. So um, we're an hour closer to you. So instead of seven. Uh, what was it? So I can't, can't even think about it. It's 3 p.m. It'll be 3 p.m. on the East Coast and 12 p.m. on the West Coast on Sunday, just like ours is, is shifted this week. And we will be shifted uh, next week as well. And then we catch up on the, the, the last Sunday of, of March and, um, and we'll be... Uh, We'll be back into synchronization until October. And poor old Ben, I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry, Matt. I'm going to have to apologise publicly. You know, we do we do all of these things. Um, you know, I say we. Ben puts all of these things together. And let's throw up. Um, this is next week's uh, special guest, Eric Norlander. So we put the show times at the top, and so when it gets to you know this time of year when we um, change change uh, the the daylight savings, I say to Ben, "Oh, we need to update this." And um, we always get it mixed up, and we always get either the times wrong, or we get the time zones wrong. And, and but he he did a sterling job, and we've actually got all of these now sorted. Um, so uh, I just <laughs> I just don't understand it at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. I can't tell time on a twenty four hour clock, so I'm useless at this. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, I, I think we should just get rid of daylight savings altogether. It's just what's the point? Either just fix it at whatever it is, and just let's go with it. But. That's an argument for another. Yeah. That's an argument for Kent's Bong Show, which is on every Thursday uh, from seven PM UK. Show, show. yeah, sorry, yes. show the Kent's Bong show. show. Yeah, yes, yeah, so yeah, and that's coming up. Third, we had one just yesterday, um, and we've got another one this coming Thursday, I'm sure. Uh, don't forget, oh, Rans is back because he had a week off last week. So Rans is show one PM UK time. I think the pre-show two PM for the main show. Uh, you, this is all UK time slots, so you work it out. Uh, Google's your friend. Uh, so Rans is back on Saturday, and then of course we've got Dom on Sunday, Jamie before him uh, on Sunday as well. Um, so yeah, uh, lots to to look forward to. Kent, what's your weekend going to look like? Uh, oh God, it's quite busy actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got a few bits and pieces I've got to get sorted out for the for Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, um, uh, as we try to work around the uh, <laughs> absolute crap hole that this house is in at the moment, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's lot, lots going on, and uh, you know, busy, busy. Yeah, the usual stuff. Good stuff. Excellent. Right. Well, let's just tell everyone who we've got coming up uh, over the next few weeks. So next week, uh, as you saw before, we've got the the wonderful, the legend that is Eric Norlander. Um, so lots of great stories I'm sure that we're going to get from him of course he works closely with has worked closely with Elisis in the past works closely with um, IK Multimedia and is just a, an incredible synthesis and player so uh, lots of um, stuff to look forward to there and then on April 1st we've got the big hairy beast from Wales it's only uh, Gaz Williams <laughs> although um, yeah because th- those times you'll see now are correct see We've got them all, all done. Um, so Gaz will be on the show April 1st. He chose that date. Um, following week, we've got the wonderful Kelly Marie. Um, she'll be joining us and telling us about her studio and what she does in her with her uh, all the loads of since She's a big emulator fan as well, so I'm looking forward to that one. Unfortunately, though, I'm not going to be around for that show. Um, so, Ben, we're going to have to get you fully trained up to run the thing. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> And we continue um, our series of uh, amazing women synthesists the following week with the wonderful Tara Bush, uh, a.k.a. I Speak Machine, currently out on tour uh, supporting Gary Newman, no less, on the North American leg of his tour. So uh, Tara and her husband, uh, Math, who does a lot of the the kind of visuals and graphics for their act, um, they'll be joining us on April 15th. 
And then we've got a real treat for you. We've got Michael Whalen, uh, whose new album, Imaginary Trains, is going to be released on the day that he's on the show. And to coincide with that, he's doing a live gig from Emmy App in Philadelphia. And they've managed to sort him out with this amazing rig that consists of, and if I remember this rightly, three mini Moogs, a DX1, a GX1, a CS80, uh, a Profit 5, um, a Rhodes, I think, is in there, and a CP80 as well, and all sorts of things. And a Quadra, yeah. So, I mean, it's an incredible rig, and he has promised that he will try and give us a a nice big rig tour um, before he does his live event later that day. So really looking forward to, to having Michael on the show. Um, and then coming up in May, we've got uh, Andrew Longhurst. Andrew has a long history uh, working with Emu back in the day, but he now uh, runs a company that does lots of high-end um, media with um, sort of, uh, promotional videos and stuff. And he's the kind of the you know his long history in music. So he, and he's a real gear nerd as well. So uh, looking forward to having Andrew on the show. We got hit in touch with him through through Kent show uh, funnily enough so um and then the following week after that is another cherry audio kind of exclusive now Dan was supposed to be on the show last week but couldn't make it for you know reasons as we've just seen uh, we you know the dream synth was just about to launch so Dan was like really gutted and said I really want to come back on the show can I come back when we've got something else to sing about that's going to be kind of around May time so could we do that? And was, absolutely. So uh, May 13th, we've got Dan Goldstein on the show, who has promised he will tell us all about the new thing that they're working on, which he hasn't even told me what it is yet. So looking forward to that one. Um, the following week, we're welcoming back our friend Jim Danica, who um, uh, plays out with uh, Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant over in the US. He's the, uh, the keyboard player and MD for those guys. Um, he lives in Nashville, has an amazing studio, and has this brilliant product called Backstage Pass, which are sample libraries for uh, main stage and specifically made for use in a live environment. So you get the, all the libraries go in main stage, and then there's even Touch OSC uh, files that you get with that, so you can control it all from an iPad if you wish. So um, Jim's branching out that. He's um, he's moved distribution and sales to a, a new company so he can work on more stuff, and there's contact versions. So we'll, we'll get the skinny on all of those um, as we go through. We've also got on June 10th, we don't have a graphic for him yet, but we do have... Um, uh, Elliot Kennedy, who is a, a massive songwriter, has written just loads and loads of hit records for uh, for people that both sides of the Atlantic. He's from Sheffield. Uh, we've got Jim Glue to thank for that one for setting us up with Elliot. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then yeah, we've got uh, other people sort of kind of hopefully coming in for the second half of the year. If you know someone who wants to be on the show tell them to uh, get in touch it'll be fantastic right i'm going to go off and consume a bottle of wine and watch some tv and put my feet up for the weekend because i deserve it um thank you again richard for for coming along Uh, it's been fantastic having you thank you ben thank you kent and of course thanks to everyone in the chat room and if you're watching on catch up thanks for coming back we really do appreciate the fact that you 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 come and see us uh we'll be back same time same place next week with uh, Eric Norlander. Don't miss that one. That will be fun. And until then, have an amazing weekend, everyone. And uh, we will see you on the flip side. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.